Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Boise State Game Pants Esports Arena. Welcome to our coverage of the NECC Collegiate Valorant regular season. Each match getting us closer and closer to those playoffs and hopefully a championship. That is not Fish. That is my wonderful co-host, Baratel, joining me on the desk tonight. We are launching into our beginning matches against two of last season's heaviest hitters. Uh, I am Tim Voiceless Whitman. And Veritel is going to help me. Hi. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> I'm here. He's going to help me break down this match tonight. So let's start off with a wonderful question that I've been dying to ask you. Now that Yoru has had a little bit more time to settle in, do you think he really needs uh, any sort of changes, buffs, nerfs, or do you think he's great where he's at? Great question, first and foremost. Uh, I think he's an interesting place right now. I, I, we also saw when uh, Sky first got released that she took a long time for any sort of competitive teams to start adapting to her and including them into the rotation. But I think, you know, even with you know, this fantastic kind of manipulative uh, uh, sleight of hand, you know, smoke and mirrors kind of play style that this new agent can provide, I don't think a lot of teams are really looking to pick them up yet. I mean, we, we even see right now going on almost concurrently Twitch rivals, high echelon to play. Uh, not a lot of people considering even practicing them while they're taking him in to these kind of, you know, the, these streamers, of course, are pretty gifted. Um, not necessarily all Radiant players, but they, you know, don't want to consider trying to you know, work something new out when there's already stuff that already works. Excellent point. So it'll be interesting to see if we see any Yoru picks as we launch into these matches tonight. We do see uh, some changes, courtesy of this wonderful patch notes graphic that uh, Valorant provided. We have changes to the Marshall. It uh, does a little, you have a little bit faster walking speed with it, uh, and it costs a little bit more. Um, we have, or sorry, little, costs the same. Excuse me, my apologies. The Stinger is what costs a little bit more. That was mm. raised by 100 credits. Uh, and its spray was increased a little bit. A little bit less accurate, especially while you're on the move. The Frenzy is also 100 credits more because uh, Sentinels single-handedly made that an incredible utility machine on the pistol rounds. Um, and Reyna had some huge changes to her. Her uh, maximum number of Devour and Dismiss charges was cut in half, but she can use them even if she does not land the killing blow, right. which uh, will just help her tremendously when she is in trouble because there's nothing worse than uh, getting 200, or, uh, sorry, 140 damage on somebody and then losing the final blow kill to somebody else and you don't get the order. No fun, no fun at all. So here we are in the Valorant NECC League. Just a reminder of our rules tonight. Here in the league, we have nine-week series, and that's 30-plus teams competing in best-of-three set maps each week. Those maps are chosen ahead of time, but the home team will get to pick their beginning side for the first and third map, if we have a third map, and the away team will get to pick their beginning side for the second game. Broncos are highly ranked, and they are part of the highest division here in the Valorant NAC NECC League. This is the Champions Division. Both of our teams are up there, along with Dominguez Hills, a couple Florida teams, John Wood, Johnson & Wales, Sacramento, UBC, and UC Davis. And a lot of these teams we see kind of spread throughout these uh, divisions. We, we've had some familiarity with all, a, a lot of them. Some of them, are, of course, are new uh, combatants to us, not you know, outside of scrims and whatnot. But uh, it, they do show a lot of promise. And I think that with all these teams here, even if there is a, a separate division for each set of teams, really can't count out any of these challenger emergent teams because we've seen some tremendous work from schools such as Alabama, Huntsville, and Rio Grande as well. Absolutely. It is going to be very interesting to see what upsets occur when, uh, you know, some of those emergents face off against challengers and challengers, and champions, et cetera, et cetera, because, you know, nothing is for sure, especially in Valorant. When the game starts to, you know, lean momentum one direction, it can be very hard to get control back again. I do want to, you know, show that we, in the earlier rules kind of graphic, Boise State being very highly ranked, the Broncos did a phenomenal job of showing exactly why that is. They, they played with their hearts out. They, they fell behind early in the game, but came back with the swiftness. Here is our Boise State team for uh, Boise, one of the Boise State teams. We definitely have two here. We have Bandito, it's Ethan Cobb. Dream Maker is Luke Edwards. Soldier is Jack Wilcox. Lycan is Blake Ramsey. And Your Hat is Seth Banta. It doesn't look like we're not, we're not having shells this evening. No, it does seem that shells has been swapped out for Bandito on this team. Maybe uh, subbing in, maybe he's not feeling well. Could be the Rona. 
Maybe, I don't know. I, when it comes down to it, based off the performance of last week, we, we saw so much promise in, in Shells and how we can completely understand why they were part of that roster. Uh, maybe, you know, it could be something else getting in the way of that. But this is a, a very tried and true familiar roster that we're seeing right now for the Broncos. And this is one that you know, many opponents should be afraid of. Absolutely. It will be very interesting to see if the Broncos will suffer too much without shells in the lineup this evening. Our first match tonight is between Boise State and Sacramento State University, who placed second last fall in the NACE Collegiate Valorant Tournament, uh, just losing out. Uh, who uh, There was a reverse sweep. They lost to uh, Cal State Dominguez Hills. Uh, beat, beat out Sacramento in a uh, reverse sweep there. So we're going to launch right in. Here is our first match. Boise State versus Sacramento State University. We're going to set this up. We will be launching right in very shortly. Yeah, and I, as we already talked about, the, the maps are predetermined. So the first one we'll see is going to be split, which is arguably at least my favorite map because of the ropes. The more ropes you have on a map, the better the map is, in my opinion. Yeah, the... Bind is definitely a wonderful map as well. We've also seen uh, some, a lot of Haven play out mm. here lately. So uh, before we launch into their game, we're just going to present uh, Doc's keys to the game. Account identity, Trust Global, deli Trust Global Network delivers real-time prevention fraud, account protection, and enables personalized customer experiences for more than 9,000 leading brands. Count is the provider of Doc's keys to the game. And we got to remember that in Valorant, you must watch your corners. You have to be ready to trade your teammates, and don't be afraid to use your ultimates. They don't build as slowly as you think. And with that, the pacing that Boise State really plays at, the Broncos, again, are very both eager and uh, willing to use those ultimates as, of course, the keys to the game dictate. Uh, and, and to great effect, too. We barely see any of those go by the wayside. It actually looks like it's going to be bind for the first map. And we're going to see exactly what both of these teams are looking at picking here. The Silva, a uh, pretty standard pick along with the Phoenix as well as the Reyna. Not Indeed. really unfamiliar with those as we've seen them almost every time on any other team. And what's being hovered is kind of a question. It looks like there's a Killjoy being considered from the side of Lycan, which is possibly one of the fresher you know, agents to be available for the Boise State roster. And we don't see a lot of information being given over just yet from Sandy or Sacramento State right now. Yeah, it is interesting. Boise State does not generally prefer playing the uh, the Killjoy. We have seen that from a lot of opponents, but they generally tend to prefer um, usually a Cipher as that Sentinel. So very interesting to see them changing it up a little bit. Your hat also uh, has locked in the uh, Brimstone rather than the Omen for the controller, which is a little bit of a variation as well. We discussed a, bit, a little Choose bit last week agent. how bi uh, Brimstone has come back into the meta just a little bit, um, and Omen has fallen off just a tiny bit. It was previously that Omen got picked pretty much every map, and they will lock in the Killjoy, so there you go. And I think for the first time in a long time, we're not seeing uh, a mirror jet matchup. And that's something we typically see across like a very high... Um, you know, skilled players and teams when they compete. Uh, Radiant almost always has uh, a jet per team. It doesn't look like to be the case. And kind of these misnomers, we have the Breach Brimstone combo here on the side of Sacramento. It's going to be interesting how they're going to use those in tandem. Yeah, very easy to let, line up a shot with the uh, the fault line as, as Breach and then enter the site using uh, using Brimstone to wall off those, those points you don't really want to peak using his smokes there. So See if uh, Sacramento can use that uh, that utility to their advantage as we load up into our first map here. Anything interesting going on in the pistol buy that strikes out at you? I see a lot of classics. I'm really surprised that uh, Sacramento... Classics and ghosts. Maybe that... Wow, looks like a couple of frenzies over there. That's out of Boise State as well. The Broncos doing maybe... Maybe a little bit more of a conservative play style, making sure that, of course, Sacramento gets themselves in a position where they're not going to be ready for that amount of high damage and high uh, bullet put out. But we'll have to see if Stormbolt's going to come out. We will find anything just yet. Nice little pop shots to try and scout the information. They are going to rescind back to going away from this corner, trying to not get double popped here. And they are spread. Yeah, good call, especially when it's on a two-point map. The fault line not going to hit anything. Smokes are going to come down as well to choke off those crucial areas, uh, points of contention. Here comes that scouting drone. We'll see if it's going to find anything. It does find two. Boise State has at least two members of the five 
noted and pinpointed as of right now. They're going to try and keep things that way for as long as they can. No sudden movements here from the side of Sacramento. I'm wondering if they're waiting for that crucial 45 seconds to start things going. It does appear that the Reyna and the Brimstone for either side is a little bit tagged up. However, Reyna can heal herself back up. The Brimstone cannot. So that is going to be a low health player who may need to watch himself for the rest of the match. Bandito did trade shots out. Um, but on, like, on a kill or an assist as of the newest patch, he'll be able to heal himself right back up. It does appear that this is being played pre-patch. Uh, as you can see at the bottom there, Reyna has four charges of her Dismiss and Devour ability, not just the two. As Yurhat picks up a kill immediately, wow. and Bandito will spray it out with the Frenzy and get one of his own. Yurhat and Bandito don't even need the rest of the team. They're going to take everyone down all by themselves as Lycan comes in, picks up the last one with his Frenzy, and Boise State take a flawless first round. Starting so confidently and uh, really off the curtails, uh, of the fact that this frenzy was just able to put out so much more damage and just more bullets, you know, on average than any other classic ever do, or even a ghost for that matter. So, kudos for the Broncos for buying out something that they felt confident in doing, giving themselves a little bit of an edge, and forcing Sacramento to go for another pistol econ round. Yeah, it looks like they're going to go for a completely full save unless they change their minds at the last minute. Uh, looks like one possible Sheriff being highlighted, but no, they're going to go all classics, which Come means on. this is almost a sure win for Boise State Do the this round, guarding, barring any heroics from the side of Sacramento. Sacramento they're gonna five deep. They're going to be two picked up, three picked up, four. Oh. One more, and that's the full piece. But unfortunately, the slice just went by. Two members of Boise State will fall, but Sacramento reeling from their own tactics. Going to get instantly punished, and the Broncos will walk away. Three members remaining 2-0 so that, far on the map. That is why you do not line up one on top of each <laughs> other in Valorant right there. True. Because you get four easy kills just by spraying with the Ares. And then uh, we get coming back in Booty Bandito with the uh, the Stinger there. We'll pick up a very long range kill and finish them off. So up two rounds now. This is where things get a little bit interesting though because Sacramento have the money for a full buy. Um, and Boise State are going to be most likely using most of the weaponry that they had in the round before because it's generally not a great Look idea to well they lined up for this, row. actually. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Two, three, four, done. Oh, oh that's okay if I fall. He's Zach, done his work at that teammates, point. Trading teammates, that's exactly what Doc's keys of the game were curtailing to because that's exactly what you want to end up doing. Trading three for one seems like a pretty easy price. Bandito trying what they can to try and get some shots through the smoke. Not really getting what they want here in terms of damage or any sort of information. There goes that side wind to the tailwind out to the side. The jet using one of those dashes could be huge now that they do not have that hyper increased mobility. And as we can clearly see, you know, when it comes down to being successful in any sort of round with frags, Phoenix already has their ultimates. They can be incredibly aggressive on this defense. Absolutely. And like we said in Doc's Keys to the game, you can't be afraid to use those ultimates because they show up faster than you think. It's already round three and Phoenix has his, so he can be as aggressive as he wants and he'll just come right back to life using that ultimate of his. I think your hat's not allowed to play anyone without a hat, by the way. It's either, <laughs> it's either Cypher or... Anyone else that has a fantastic hat. Now I want to know. I want to go back through every single one of his games and see oh, if he's ever played someone without a hat. Nice challenge here for the side of Sacramento. Left. They did get one pick off, and now it just looks like Broncos have time to retaliate, get the pick off while looking down the deep end. Here comes the ultimate. Are there jokes available here? Any comedians on the side of Sacramento? It doesn't look like just yet. Soldier looking forward does get popped off. Three members remain. It's three versus five. Not something we haven't seen before. The Broncos do pick up one. They do have only four remaining, but now the timer starts here. And Voiceless, they may be able to do this. It's three versus three. They do get picked off, though, unfortunately. A lot of bullets being expended at the kind of taunting DM aspect. It does get picked off as well. Boise State does suffer their first round loss. And Sacramento doing phenomenally well, getting exactly what they want to in terms of those 1v1 pickoffs, and then just continuing to ride the momentum. Yeah, that is just generally what happens a lot of the time on those third rounds, like I was alluding to. It's they, Sacramento is able to afford a full buy of all the guns that they'd like to have, and Boise State is on a kind of broken half buy. They've got some of the guns they'd like and some that are a little bit weaker because they bought them in the second round with what they had. So unfortunate for Boise State, but not that uncommon to see them drop that third round after losing the first two. Just all Sheriff all the time. It's, it's really easy. Why would you use anything else? So it's the best gun. Looks like a little bit of a lineup situation, not similar to the five deep here on this long haul, but 
Enough to give some some worries to the Broncos, making them back up. Now it looks like there's more members in the sidelines trying to converge here on this point, and the Broncos are possibly not very much aware. They only know the people that are in the hallway right now, so anyone here up by Hookah are completely unscouted. As of right now, here comes the ultimates. As we mentioned, they are definitely usable and need to be used in order to get an advantage. Here comes an advantage there. One pick off. The Broncos are getting picked off right and left, but they do not meet things with Ooh. no defense. It does look like a two-piece here for the side of Soldier. going to continue to push forward. And Bandito, dangerously low to being popped off. A Mosquito could take them out. Luckily, there are no Mosquitoes yet in this game. And the Broncos now holding down the fort, so to speak. Don't know if they have eyes One on the remaining. spike holders. Legit Soldier picking up the fourth elimination of this round. Maybe looking to get an ace here if it's not denied by the team. They do know that someone's around up there or close to it. Continuing to deny as much vision as possible. They know someone's up there now. They were able to see it. Your hat going to put down that left. fantastic ultimate. Going to get some huge amounts of damage and pressure really and making sure that this player cannot get anywhere and again the spikes nowhere to be seen so it doesn't even matter broncos really just toying with their food at that point that player could not even rotate to try and find the bomb and make a hero play yeah i think if you're kaizen strife in that scenario you really got to go somewhere else uh, you're pinned down uh, he does, you know, he gets that camera out and is able to cross a cross window there through hookah, but he, you know, at that moment, I think you, ha you have to go around, loop back around, try and find something or, you know, save your gun at that point. But, you know, just continuing to remain in that window is not really going to get you much in the way of information or any kills because you're just pinned down from so many different angles. Sacramento's toying with my emotions. They keep hovering the buggy. Somebody really wants to make you happy, and then teammates are just like, no, don't, don't, do, don't it. do it. No, no sheriff, no buckies, no nothing. No fine. Looks like they do have a split push coming up here. They're starting to toy just a little bit with Hookah. They have completely backed off of the B long, and they're going through A short just a little bit. So looking like they're going to get a couple picks, get some information, and then decide where they'd like to take the bomb from there. A little bit smarter of a move than committing to a pick at the very beginning and then maybe it not working out as they shy away from B and starting to favor that A cheat as Your Hat and Bandito are crouched in the corner, daring anybody to cross in front of them and they wow. do. Your Hat gets the headshot. Bandito follows up with another one of his own and now one it's a. Oh, there's only one wow. remaining! Bandito will pick up three and there's only one with his Bucky remaining. He'll get one it's kill working. onto Soldier. And swap that out uh -oh. for the Vandal. Kaizen Strife <laughs> all by himself trying for the 1v4 clutch. May just opt to save this Vandal and get out with his life. I think you try and get out as much as possible, although you are now being hunted. Broncos are aware. Get the pick as well. Four to zero here. The Broncos are quickly picking up steam. But now you have to consider, even though they are getting some trades left and right, they weren't able to completely win around based off of gunplay alone. But now... They now have enough picks to have a couple ultimates online for them, which they can use in tandem to really start getting themselves at a competitive edge. You can totally see that uh, Sacramento were definitely expecting somebody to be playing U-Haul. They were cheating and looking that way with almost all of their members, and so when the, when the crossfire came out from, you know, showers, they just absolutely weren't ready for it, and two players go down before they can almost even react to what's happening. Nice shots here in the middle, and out, and that robot will be destroyed. Shots from down the lane will be huge as, again, Sacramento almost walking into uh, death trap here. The Broncos holding this was pretty much iron resolve. Yes, they did lose one, but it's not enough to deter them. Here comes that Cypher ult. He knows where you are. At least he did for a second. Now the Broncos have the time to remove themselves from the area. Nice time to dodge out this fantastic amount of damage and just kind of sustain uh, to keep them in place where, you know, of course, the Cypher gave them the heads up. Nice shots will land. One it does look like your hat's here on the backside. They do know that he's around. That cage will be dismantled. And the rest of everyone will kind of converge. The Broncos eking out another win. And this one's starting to get a little scary if uh, Sacramento can't find something else to do. I really like the idea of Sacramento there to combine that Rolling Thunder with the, uh, the Showstopper in order to gain a complete control of the B site. They almost made it work, but it just didn't quite pan out because Boise State were able to get behind them. They uh, did leave somebody in Hookah trying to watch, but as soon as they lost Hookah control, almost everybody fell, and then you just have one under Tuna Can trying to desperately hold on to his life, and that's just not going to happen. Yeah, that's such a, a risky decision to drop down from Hookah because, again, it's 
you can get back up, but it's not without alerting everyone on the map. Absolutely, and you you spend so much time vulnerable trying to jump up those boxes. As Booty Bandito gets blinded, he's going to have to get out, but the, wow. the blades come out from Quiz, and he gets them straight to the dome. He's going to go down immediately. Bronco's at a disadvantage as Sacramento pushing hard into a site and immediately going to plant the spike. No hesitation. No hesitation. Here comes some more smokes, possibly. Trying to give some opportunity for the Broncos to recontest. Here comes the ultimates out from everywhere. It's going to be a huge amount of damage and control. Broncos are going to kiss, stand, feed Beautiful. themselves back onto the point. And yes, Sacramento got the plant, but beyond that, they really gave, gave much. And yes, the double diffuse, spreading the love, spreading the points. Keeping that KDA, that point value nice and high, and you're getting those desperate, then those nice necessary clips to that ultimate. Absolutely beautiful use of the orbital strike coming out from your hat. He picks up one with the ultimate itself, forces two out of position where he can mow them down with ease, and at that point, it's a cakewalk to clean it up. So while they did lose a lot of control of the site individually, they kept calm, and they had a perfect plan to retake. Uh, just absolutely gorgeous there from the side of the Broncos. Yeah, and notice credit to Sacramento as well. I mean, they're doing a phenomenal job getting even themselves to the point, securing enough aggression to keep uh, the Broncos from contesting the initial plant. But it was then what they did afterwards that cost them that, their lives and the round as well. They, they forced themselves to get shepherded towards U-Haul here, and it just didn't end up working for them because, again, if you're going to get hit by the orbital strike, that's going to kill you. And if you walk outside, you're going to be walking into the welcoming arms of the Broncos. Molly comes out there for Bandito, going to try and smoke off. He did get something in that corner previously. There was nowhere there this time, but Bandito will then get something through the smoke. Lucky Sprays gets a headshot, and now the Hunter's Fury comes out from Dreammaker. I don't think he got tags onto anybody there. Um, just denying a little bit of positioning, forcing them back. They're going to rotate through showers, and capturing that old point will alert the Broncos to the, their position. They know that there's somebody there now. Um, so no surprises coming that way. And as they capture the old point, it actually does look like one of them is going to back off, and they're beginning to cheat back towards Market, potentially looking for a B-side hit. Um, so someone in showers. Just staying there to uh, just to distract, potentially make noise as the rest of them rotate over to the other side, try and confuse the Broncos as to where the hit is actually coming from. But with a uh, spike carrier going down, the Broncos will know that the play was intended for B because you don't take the spike to a site you're not planning on planting at. 30 seconds left. 30 seconds remain. And there goes another player as well. That's unfortunately a spike carrier. So all the Broncos need to do is hold this angle or many more than that, and they will surely walk away with this. And as you can clearly see, that's the call. They have multiple members now rotating here to the site. Here comes the fire. Not going to find anything. Nice flick over here from Bandito. Not going to be able to be stopped on the pop. As unfortunately, it does look like Sacramento can't get the element of surprise to work for them. And uh, unfortunately, it does look like this raise is going to try and get themselves conserved. Not trying to spend any money. They go for the trade kill, but the exit will go favorable to the Broncos. And 7-1 to one now is the score. Starting to run away with things a little bit are the Broncos. Now, the uh, Sacramento side do have enough for a full buy or kind of a broken buy on this round. Now the Broncos are absolutely loaded. More money than they can ever do anything with in one round, so they can lose a few rounds before their eco starts to start hurting a little bit as they set up in the same positions they've had the whole time. So I want to ask you something, Baratel. What do you think needs to change here for Sacramento in order to get some control of this game? I mean, we've seen a few times in which Sacramento players are able to find a 1v1 in their favor before the Broncos can even notice. They need to capitalize on those. They've done so a few times, but not nearly <laughs> enough. And unfortunately, can't avoid that. Uh, here comes the Bronco patented. I'll just continue to shoot through the wall, and you'll just continue to lose out strat. What walls? Why do you? Who cares? Exactly. I did want to ask you, when it comes down to even if having a broken buy, uh, do you favor getting the full armor or like a weapon you're most comfortable with or a high, a high more damage weapon? I definitely think the weapon is a higher priority than the armor. Um, you, you see clutches of people at 13 health when they have the right gun and they're right. in the right hand. So uh, 25 less armor is not the biggest of deals over getting the weapon that really you're comfortable with and you can frag out on. That's why I rocked the Bucky. <laughs> Best weapon. You should always have enough credits for the button. That thing's cheap. <laughs> That's the strat. I can go in, One play Phoenix with ultimate, just die and do damage. It's the best. And speaking of doing damage, looks like Bronco is surely trying to do their best to try and come back with a second flawless of the map. And they do so. And even if 
Uh, Bandito wasn't able to secure that on the backside, I think, with Soldier there to secure the Flawless either way. Yeah, Isiko with a very heroic effort trying to get out that blind, and he actually does blind Bandito, almost able to pick up the kill, but the Stinger spray just a little bit too wide, not able to get what he needs, and on 18 health, he didn't have much of a chance of getting two kills anyway, so that wasn't long for that play. It does look like it's interesting in terms of the way that the Sacramento team has drafted, only because of the fact that the Cypher player has the most ultimate so far on the team. Whereas, you know, they're, they're playing someone that will give information to the rest of their teammates. Unfortunately, they end up being the only one that's alive towards the end of the round, so it's unfortunately unable to get capitalized on most seeds. Oh, oh, the the in this long point. The blind will come out and one will falter. Here comes that overall strike from the side. Sacramento will catch anyone in their midst. Does look like the Broncos are able to get themselves a little bit to safety, but not without losing control of the point. They are going to suffer to an early bait on terms of the plant, and it doesn't look like they're going to go for full commit just yet. Here comes the final remaining ticks for that. Going to get found out and stopped, actually, the plant. Uh, Carrier will actually falter, and now it is a 2v3 favoring the side of the Broncos in a matter of seconds. But you gotta be careful because this action is not over yet. Your hat's gonna find one, and he does not win successfully. The pistol, one and I do believe that's a sheriff will win supreme. Like we'll pick up one on the backside. It's two versus one, but the spike has not been seen. It's completely covered right now from the side of the Broncos, and this is all they have to do. This raise cannot do this 1v2 without ultimate. They might be able to get some more chip shots. They actually pick up one. If they're able to get this reload, they do have enough ammo for 19 bullets. 19 bullets in a dream. They're going to go for the jump shot, but don't go for the secure. And they will get challenged by the Broncos. Boise State will take their ninth one. That was a beautiful lineup by Rux there towards the end of that round. He gets the 1v1 just simply by getting the lineup where he's only in shot of one of the two Broncos playing that angle at the moment. He gets the kill that he needs, and I'm not sure what the jump peak was meant to encourage there. Maybe he's just looking for a little bit of information, um, but didn't plan out for him. He ended up going down to hey, look, the final Bronco. And it's a little us. Well, there we are. We're not that small. No, we're bigger than that. We're pretty big. Here comes the drone again. And it just seems that Sacramento's trying to do new things, but every time they do so, they're feeling more and more discouraged. Ooh, that's unfortunate. That's, unfortunate. <laughs> that's a yikes. Does not matter, though, because they're able to peek regardless. Not getting challenged by this insanely high DPS gun, but unfortunately, the ADS for it is unbearably long. It's going to be found out here on the backside as well. The Broncos now, for the first time, seem to be kind of scrambling, and Sacramento seem to be the ones now jumping in the driver's seat. Looks like the Broncos' tendency to play a little bit. Aggro has come back to bite them in this round. They lose somebody in Octagon and Hookah immediately. And now the spike is down, and Boise State only have two players to try and retake this site with. And CSU have great post-plant positions. There is no way that you can get into this site without somebody knowing here. I like the idea of having two people play Hookah. We saw one in Hookah on a previous round, and it didn't plan out for them. So I love that they have two now with a crossfire. That's just going to play out perfectly. And I don't know if your hat wants to take a 1v4 in this scenario. Too sure to get exit kills. Unfortunately, goes for it. Does not even get a trade there. So... You know, maybe a little bit of foot and mouth here. The Sacramento team now finally finding something that will end up working for them. But as you had mentioned, Voices, it could just be them capitalizing on the fact that the Broncos were being a, a bit uh, forward in their last round. Yeah, and I mean, when you start to notice patterns in this game, it can become easy to exploit those patterns, which is why it's important to vary up your strategies from round to round. And as we know, the Broncos like to play fast and hard and aggro, and you know, sometimes enemies are able to capitalize on that, and that may have been what cost the Broncos that round right there. We're heading into the final round of this half. And there's a 9-2 score lead, so far from disappointing for the Broncos, but they do need to play careful because this game can shift rapidly. Yeah, it is something to note, though, them maybe being a little bit more lax now that they have a, a pretty comfortable score lead in the round and knowing that it's going to swap no matter what. Ooh, Lycan tries to avoid the Rolling Thunder but still gets caught up in it, and he's going to go down as well. Legit Soldier playing on the retake. Has to get out of the way of the Aftershock. We'll get one kill sprayed through there as he uses up his ultimate. Wow. Almost exact precision here from the Orbital Strike back to where Phoenix was going to loop back to, but not necessarily just yet. The scouting drone will keep low and slow to the ground, trying not to expose itself before finding information. They know where the players are. They just got to figure out what they're going to do about it. Two versus four for the Broncos. Could be an order that they don't have the cashola to check here. Yeah, they've got to get through U-Haul and get U-Haul control, but they don't have much time to do it. The Hunter's Fury does come out. We'll get two kills. There's only one remaining. It is just the Cypher playing on the backside. They'll have a guess where he is. Take the charge. 
Kaisen Strike will take out Legit Soldier as he goes to defuse. He goes for the wall base? He will get it. He'll get it. Wow. Unless he gets shot down in the process. Wow. The wall bangs actually Switching paid sides. off. <laughs> yes, How it incredible. did. How <laughs> incredible. That was incredibly close. Excellent play from the Broncos in that 2v4 scenario. You know, that is doable but tough when it comes to that point. Here comes these Hunter Furies. Boop. And, and boop. boop. He gets two. Now, it must be said that that is a great setup from the side of Soldier. You know, without the damage that he puts down with his Phantom, that second Hunter's Fury Pulse will not get a kill. So that's definitely an assist on the side of him. But well played from CSU, that just understanding the time that the spike has left and playing mm. time to their advantage. Yeah, and more importantly, they knew that it was crunch time and there was not much more that the Broncos could do but start to fusing. So them staying conservatively back further away from being challenged and losing a 1v1, you know, just going for those wall banks ended up paying up for them. And uh, granted, now that the sides are swamped, the Broncos are going to be assaulting the Sacramento defense. Maybe that uh, Sacramento is starting to learn a couple trends from the Bronco side. Well, we'll see if they can translate that into any more round wins here. We do have a technical pause at the moment. You can see the timer at the top locked at seven seconds remaining. It's possibly some tech issues, possibly uh, somebody DC'd, something like that. But soon we'll be back underway here. And now that we've swapped sides, the Broncos will be the attacking team and Sacramento the defending. Now, this might play into the Broncos' tendency to play very aggro. It might make things even harder on CSU, mm -hmm. or it could get them into trouble and CSU could find themselves with a way back into this game. Very true. Uh, something to note. Um, not that I don't think it needs to be said, because this is like a very fanatical type game. If you're holding something and it like starts catching fire or is on fire, don't hold on to that anymore. You talking about the dragon fire gun? Just no, just the, the the knife that is currently on fire right there. That one that's lit currently ablaze. Don't hold that, guys. Uh, don't try this at home. And not unless you're a supernatural agent with the ability to disappear and stuff like that. What is her lore? I don't know. You know, Bright likes to keep a bit, a bit of a tight lid on the lore and don't tend to know things like that. You just get little clues here and there from that pre-round chatter about where people come from, so. It's a scouting drone. This is one of the patented invade starts here on the side of the Broncos, and it's something that has paid many dividends for them. It turns around, they are finally able to get some kills here. A couple of bullets went away, but not finally, you know, being deterred from landing eventually. Another pick here for the side of the Broncos, meaning that they are going to go for a plant. Here comes that grenade here from the Rays. Could be huge if it lands where it needs to. Did not do so. The, the timer has inevitably started so early in the round. Boombot will just go by, unfortunately, haphazardly, not finding anything. And another elimination for the Broncos means that they have only one player left to find and take out before they take out this round. And they do so, but not without falling. Two casualties. One versus two could be huge for it. But Broncos don't need to do anything, mind you. They have the spike planted. They just have to guard the angle so it doesn't get diffused. Both players for Boise State are very low, as is Quiz. As he takes that corner into U-Haul, he will get taken down. But you can tell that Soldier did not actually know where Quiz was playing in that back corner. He kind of looking around. One goes down, and he looks around, and then another one goes down as well. So that information being absolutely crucial. CSU almost having a way back into the round there, but 2v1 just a little bit too much to ask for a jet on it, you know, 30 health or something thereabouts. And you can see the priority of who's going in first and who's being the most proactive on the Broncos side because they swap between three different players as to who's holding the spike. Uh, ultimately reserving your hat to be the one as they typically on attack are the last ones to go in knowing that they have, you know, not the most infiltrating kind of character that's playing. Absolutely. It can be very important to de designate who is going to hold on to that spike and who needs to be your entry fraggers. Those duelists usually best suited to that entry fragger position. So that's why you can oh. see, oh, unfortunate blind. <laughs> Soldier trying to go into the side. Lycan will get two with the help of his specter there. As a grenade goes up into Hookah, nobody going to go down from it. Considering launching the molly into backside, but they're going to instead choose to plant in the default position as Bandito is watching this smoke like a hawk. Lycan also holding down Hookah, but the blind comes out. He is not prepared. Now there are two players for CSU in Hookah. One wow. goes down to the wall bank from Bandito with that bulldog. He's underneath Tunican. He won't see what he needs in time as Quiz will get the kill with that stinger. But Soldier will get two back quickly with wow. a bulldog of his own, and that's the end of that round. Yeah, well played. It, it continues to happen that while the Broncos are putting up a nice, almost defensive front on, of course, the spike that they just planted, they almost always have a member 
on their team looking for a rotation opportunity. Look at the map if you can right now. Look exactly where Phoenix is while the rest of this action is happening. He's completely behind the entire lineup of Sacramento. And with that being such a fantastic spot for him to be, pick up the two-piece, secure the round. Absolutely. You know, we talk about that information and how important it is all the time, but you're not always in a position to gain all the information you'd like to in these short rounds, especially after the spike's been planted and, you know, you have to get in there and get going now. So having the foresight to wow. get in a position... Wow! As Soldier takes down three, and Bandito will pick up one of his own, making this a 1v3 for the side of Kaizen Strife. Yes. Uh, Interesting decision to try and do the opposite of what happened. Uh, pretty O'Reilly for them in the first side of things. Going a uh, maximum amount of people in that hallway did not end up so well for them, but now it is just a 1v2. They know exactly where he is, and Broncos now clearly... You know, showing that they're very comfortable on this map. I mean, this is one of their probably most match practiced point. ones, and this is, as you just heard, match point potential for the Broncos to move us to the next map. One more win for the Broncos, and we are moving on up. But as I was saying, it, you know, you definitely want to, with the time you have before that spike goes off, it can be so important to put yourself in a position, an off angle, where the enemy may not expect, because they don't always have time to check all the angles that they'd like to. And as you saw in the round just before, you know, two rounds ago, Soldier playing an off angle will get two quick kills and secure the round for the Broncos. It's it's game sense to a, to a degree, right? It's game sense, communication, rotations, and information where. You know, might not have all four of those check marks, but the more that you have, the better you end up being. Through the blind, he's able to pick up one with the rewind as well. He's running it back, and he's taking a plus one with them. The Broncos now one man up. Does not matter what's going to happen here for the couple, next couple seconds. The, the pace is completely in onus of the Broncos. And look at the members of Sacramento. They are scrambling. Soldier on the backside of another member is going to just be inches away he from finding know. potential kills or death. And he will find the ladder of the two. The Broncos now in a chaotic fit. It's one versus two. They do have the detain. I wonder if they're going to be able to use it to such great effect. The cage will come out. Unfortunately, the grenades will come out here. And match point will not be just given over yet. It does look like Sacramento has plenty of time to get this defuse. They're going to go for guns and trade off the one, two defuse as well. Yeah, they're also going to take control of that off. Kaizen Strife with the most expensive and powerful gun in the game. So could be something that leads into future round wins for that. To it. He's going to drop that to Quiz. An excellent idea. You always, well, not always, but it's generally a great idea to have your jet playing that off if they have the capability because they have that tailwind. Yep. They can take an aggressive angle, get a shot, and get themselves out of trouble with little to no risk. Yeah, not only that, but getting extra pips on a, almost a one-shot kill gun. Pretty good for Jet because you turn your, your one-shot kill gun into five almost one-shot kill daggers. Yeah, Jet can be absolutely deadly when she's lined up in the right angles and has all the right abilities. They're going to send the drone into showers and see two there, including the op, and Dreammaker is going to say, no, I don't want none of that. He'll send in a couple shock darts, try and get a little bit of damage, and he actually wow. will get some. Softening up Darien so Woody Bandito Both can get the kills he needs. Wow, as the split pressure attack onto showers yields everything for the Broncos. They have full sight control and the spike is already down. They're going to drop the Killjoy ult just for good measure, daring anybody to move into its radius. Wow, beautiful, beautiful aftershock there, or sorry, uh, fault line there from the side of Isiko. We'll pick up a kill that they need, but it's still a two versus four for the side of CSU. And the last two players will go down Attackers in the final win. fight. Boise State take the first round, 13 to four. Just a quick reminder for everybody out there that we are broadcasting our first ever fighting tournament. If you're interested in competing in Street Fighter V, Tekken 7, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, or Smash Ultimate, sign up at smash.gg slash tournament slash the beatdown Boise State. That is going to be excellent. We've had a few of those go down, just the Smash tournament remaining, uh, but we're more than excited to see how that goes. Do you think we'll see any Sephiroth play, Baratel? If, if for some reason there's rules that ban my Ganondorf, absolutely. You don't think we'll see him without uh, without a Ganon ban? It's possible. I think people like to play like Minecraft, Steve, more Banjo Kazooie. Like, there's more fun people to play. Although for the people that are going to try very hard, similar to myself, Sephiroth is a great pick. The, the character does way too much damage. He is a deadly man. He can hunter to zero you from like I think his his own sixty percent. Once he hits sixty percent, he can just. Full, full send, yeah, it doesn't matter. Unless, of course, the map has great ceilings, which is a, a new set of rules all, all in of itself. But 
you know, when it comes down to maps, it looks like it's going to be the pick now of Sacramento to see if maybe they have a map that they have a little bit more practice on. Of course, with the home team, I think, being us, of course we would see the, this map being pulled. But we, we do have some maps on, on the Broncos side that we're a little less trained on. And Icebox being one of those could be interesting to see if that's what Sacramento needs to pull out to pull up a win. Well, that's going to do it for map one, everybody. We're going to take a short break and come back at you with map number two in this best of three series. We're going to see if the Broncos can continue this win streak or if we're headed to a map three. Don't go away, everyone. We'll be right back. Here are a couple lessons I've learned over the years. Friendships come in all shapes and sizes. And always buckle up. Seatbelts save lives. That's a rule we can all live by. Legendary parts for legendary wins. NationalGuard.com to begin your guard adventure. Welcome back, everybody, to the Boise State Game Pants Esports Arena for our coverage of the NECC Collegiate Valorant regular season. We are locked in a deadly matchup between the Boise State Broncos and Sacramento. Tonight, joining me on the desk is Baratel, as I am Tim Voiceless Whitman, and we're going to let you right into the second map in just a moment. But before we do that, we're going to get all loaded up and set up. And I want to know from Baratel what he thinks Sacramento needs to change in this upcoming map if they're going to have any success, because that was a rough one for him. Yes, I'll agree it was definitely rough. And I think when it comes down to it for Sacramento, there was a lot of shining moments when they were the ones to get those, those final kind of eliminations to, to start picking up the pace for the rest of that round. Uh, I think that does mean that they can maybe have a more uh, contrived effort towards that. As opposed to going for a nice 1v1, you know, having one player scout an area, maybe set up a two-person defense there while scouting and turn that 1v1 into a 2v1 that is a lot more favorable because you only have to land half as many shots. Uh, beyond that, I, I think that the rounds in which they go full send, five down, one hallway, those are ones to avoid because, uh, as we've seen twice already, those do not work out so well for them. No, they do not. Boise State more than able to punish those rounds that they go a little bit too aggressive. Just a reminder of everybody of our rules tonight, if you're just joining us, this is the Valorant NECC League. 
We've got a nine-week regular series of 30-plus teams. They compete in best-of-three matches, and those maps each week are set in advance. So they're not able to be picked by winning, losing teams as opposed to other tournaments of this type. The home team is going to pick their beginning side, either attacker or defender, for the first and potentially third rounds of the game, if we have a third game. And the away team will pick the side that they start on for the second game. Mm -hmm. Broncos very highly ranked, so this is um, very interesting to see how they're going to play out through the rest of this season, if they'll be able to uh, climb their way to the top. They got very close. Very close last season, but ended up losing out to actually uh, these two teams. This, uh, the team we're playing right now ended up being in uh, second place in the last season. And, and rightfully so, right? They, there were definitely a lot of shining moments here against the Broncos in the first map. And it, it was just a matter of the, the pacing of, of the rounds. A lot of teams kind of suffer to playing what most uh, high caliber teams like to play in that like the whole enact your play around the 45 second in the, in the match part, uh, but the Broncos play at such a high pace that it catches a lot of teams off guard, and I think that with some minor adjustments, Sacramento can start playing at that speed as well. I think that's absolutely the case. I mean, if you saw during that last map, on especially that early round, when he got the, there was an early peak of four people down B long, and they all went down immediately. I don't think that uh, Sacramento were expecting to be in a gunfight at that moment. Mm -hmm. You know, you could tell that their plan was simply to creep up B long and go for an engage through Octagon. They didn't expect that early of a pick, but it, you know, Boise State, as they like to do, ended up being the aggressor, and the Broncos pick up all the kills, and the round's over before you can, you know, even do anything about it. And look at these guys. They are they are primed and ready. This is the, the standard roster here from the side of the Broncos. And, I mean, we, we can clearly see why a lot of these players have so much synergy with each other, um, you know, and it's, it's, it's such a sight to see play at this level. Yeah, this Boise State Valorant team is led by Maggie Borland. Excellent efforts to her for her coaching and all the, uh, the challenges that we've put forward through this team. <laughs> what? No, nothing. I just think when it comes down to it, Maggie's one of the people that just wears so many hats that I was surprised she could put a headset on at the end of the day. That's true. She does, a, she does way too much, more than she should. Anyway, this is our starting lineup here for the Broncos team. We've got Bandito, who is Ethan Cobb. Dreammaker is Luke Edwards. Soldier, Jack Wilcox. Lycan, Blake Ramsey. And your hat is Seth Banta. Small note earlier, um, we did have Shells, who was playing for this team, uh, found out he is subbing for Bandito. Bandito was out last week. So Shells putting on the performance of, you know, maybe a lifetime as he absolutely fragged out. Um, but he was uh, actually a sub last week. So playing very well did Shells. Yeah, which means that when it comes to the Bronco, you know, Boise State program, we are, we are equipped for anything. <laughs> And this is the matchup, Boise State Broncos versus the California State University Sacramento. They placed second in the Collegiate Valorant Tournament last fall, only losing to one team who managed to reverse sweep them in mm -hmm. the finals. Yeah, and again, not, not to dis any discredit, they are a fantastic team. They have a lot, a lot of promise, and I think it's just a, a couple different things that need to be tweaked, and they can really start matching out these rounds per you know one-for-one -one trade, as opposed to getting completely swept by the Broncos. Yeah, I mean, they look to be just a little bit caught off guard. I'm not sure if... Um, maybe roster changes happen for them in the off season, or if this is just not their day. But we'll see if they can pick things up into the second match. They've got uh, some work to do ahead of them. That last one was tough, and we've got to get back into it soon. So they've got to get the mental fortitude going to put that last map behind them, mm -hmm. go into the next map with a clean slate, and just frag like they need to. You know, stay calm. I think it's interesting when it comes to the agent pick here specifically. That we're we're seeing, of course, now one one side of the, these teams favoring. No, actually, it might be double stage on both sides, and reasonably so. It's agent. on this map that uh, dictates a lot of that kind of uh, high level, the the verticality, if you will. But uh, one of the weirdest things that I don't understand, and it could be just because I play at such a, a lower level, why is Viper not considered when it comes to trying to control the pace of a game? Viper is incredibly useful in certain circumstances, but in a lot of circumstances, other controllers offer more versatility. You know, Viper can be great in the circumstances where her kit lends her to be amazing. But outside of those circumstances, she can be very ineffective. Whereas somebody like Omen can offer a little bit in 
all sorts of circumstances. Keeps him a little bit more viable more of the time, even though Viper might be more effective in select circumstances. At least that's my take for why she doesn't get a little bit more competitive pick. Um, but she does tend to see, we do see occasional Viper picks on this map and a couple others. Uh, Icebox, just because she has some really nice lineups that... Yeah, and you those, know, those walls are phenomenal because it goes pretty much anywhere. And that ultimate, especially on A point, is such a pain in the neck to deal with to try and challenge and re recap. Yeah, so we do have Boise State mixing it up quite a bit, actually, um, adopting almost the uh, composition that uh, Sacramento were favoring in the previous game. They've swapped out yeah. for a Jet, a Breach, and a Brimstone. Um, Keeping that Killjoy, now also picking up the Sage is interesting. But again, those walls here on the split are almost necessary. Yeah, they, that mid control that Sage can provide by walling off mid early is just annoying to push into. So I think that's why they've favored that pick just now, as they're going to get the info. That is an A hit. Everyone's going to rotate. Bandito peeks out of the smoke and gets that's two. so smart. Going back into the smoke for cover, getting peeked out again. It's a jack in the box, and it's a nightmarish one for the side of Sacramento. Only one member remaining. Let's see if they are able to sleep tonight. That will give them some Z's in the bank. Another Let's set of there will be huge. A 1v2 is possible. We've seen this player do this before, and they don't have the resources just yet to maybe get things going, but they might not need it. Just this fantastic gun pick in the first round could be huge for them. It's now a one versus one. And it's going to be something Dreammaker has done incredible things before for the side of the Broncos. They need to continue to make dreams happen for them, and they do! Putting to rest any chance of Sacramento picking up the first round win, despite almost completely clutching up. Broncos taking things a little bit heavy, a little bit more uh, maybe scary than they anticipated, especially with how successful this play went. Afterwards, things just kind of fell apart, and... Oh, not, not you know, any sort of discredit to the side of Sacramento. They just got caught off guard. But having this player exactly where they needed to be, holding this angle from both sides, phenomenal job. Rux played incredible. I absolutely cannot fault him for any decisions made in that round. He takes every single peak in a 1v1 scenario without any unnecessary risk, gets everything he needs. But, you know, you're just too low health at the end in order to make a, a real threat for Dreammaker in that long fight there. John here. They are going to find him out in the corner. Nice flick there over on that side. Your hat's going to be on the other side of things. And pick up the three-piece, actually. Boise State continuing to show that maybe this point isn't the one that Sacramento needs to challenge. Bronco's going to continue the pressure. Spike will be planted, which means the timer will start soon. Here comes that wall as well, but with the high caliber of this gun, it's not going to last for too long. Going to have to go for the reload. Not necessary because the rest of the team is in the wings. The one versus two is going to be secured. All they have to do is now share the, de the defuse. Is he going to go for the full share or the full? Oh, he's no. going to go for the full thing. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, of course. He just got blowing things up, too, of course. But again, fantastic job. The initial part of that looked kind of scary there for the Broncos. So Sacramento realizing that someone's still going to be near that heaven spot. Go for the quick flick in the corner and stop that kind of defense point from being accessible. But the rest of the, the Boise State lineup was there, of course, in, in, in full and really willing to help things out. As the keys to the game by Doc were kind of dictating, you're willing to sacrifice a teammate every once in a while. Yeah, absolutely. Dreammaker, you know, putting on a bit of a clinic there as why the uh, the Stinger got a little bit of a nerf in the patch that takes place right after this one. Yes. Oh. Hey, wow, that was very close. Bandito escapes with his life as the off shot misses. And he walks away at... That's why you play the Sage, though, right there. He walked away with lower health, and the Sage is able to heal him right back up to 100. His armor is gone, though. So this is a naked op at this point. How fortuitous for that boom bot to go up the ramp there. <laughs> yeah, they're going to reveal exactly where they are. Another op shot is going to miss, and now Sacramento have complete control of mid. And they're going to choose to cheat a little wow. bit towards A site. As Kaisen Strife will pick up one onto Soldier, leaving the Broncos in a 3v5, make it a 2v5. As Lycan gets back one of his own, but they have cheated completely towards A, and the spike is going down. So now Bandito, with the help of Lycan, are going to have to make a retake effort against four players, probably looking to come in from the same angle so they can watch and double peek some angles, fight, cover each other's backs. There is somebody right on the other side of that door, but neither of them may know as it is currently walled off. Might hear some noises based on util usage. But at the moment, both of them are safe for the time being. Time is not of the essence. It is quickly dwindling for, here for the side of the Broncos. It does not look like they feel comfortable challenging just yet. So they may just actually resend back to the other side of the map and keep their guns safe. They still have an op online, but that could be before they get a couple of exit kills. 
So now it's 2v3. I don't think that their mind is technically on the defuse, but looking for exit kills. And yep, there it goes. Gonna get themselves out of range. All team members out of range as well. And I think that was the right call when it comes to how well you can actually use this gun, especially from the side of Boise State. Keeping it in your clutches is probably the right idea. Especially because Bandito is out of money after that round. So if he loses that off and has no money going into this round, it's likely that the Broncos go into most likely a half buy or a full save, which gives uh, basically a free round over to Sacramento in that case. So they kind of take the, uh, the lesser of two pain pills and uh, they lose the round in order to win the next one, holding onto that op in the process. Uh, out of curiosity, if Killjoy does have a turret on a Jade wall and the, the wall goes away, what happens to the turret? I don't know. <laughs> cool. I really don't. <laughs> We're casters. We know this game inside and out, except these really weird things. <laughs> I'm going to guess that it probably just drops down to I would hope where so. the wall would be underneath it, but that's a guess. I really have never seen somebody place a, a turret on top of a wall and this, then just watch it, it It's so interesting now that both teams have such a way to delay the initial action of the game. Sacramento is really using this delay of action to their advantage and waiting for everything to kind of settle before they make a play. Nice shots here on the point. They aren't going for this spike. They are trying to bait it right now for the plant. The Broncos now just trying to check each corner. Great idea to not hold the angle for heaven. They look for some, some informed kills, but trying to keep your eyes out for the members that you don't know exactly where they are yet. And they are going to stop that spike from being planted. The spike will be dropped on the ground, actually. And they're going to hold each angle of entry to try and get back to that spike. It almost looks like they're going to have a nice firm grip on this. But again, we've seen Quiz do phenomenal stuff, not left. only in general, but on this character as well. And a fantastic one at that to be able to continue to get those crucial orbs to get yourself the invisibility, get yourself some overhealing. Doesn't look like they want to challenge four members of the Bronco team, though. He is actually going to rotate away and try and save his gun, but unbeknownst to him, he's going to rotate straight up through man room and into the waiting arms of one of the Broncos. Oh. Lycan takes him down, and he will not escape with that gun. Great call from the Broncos. Again, not overcommitting players-wise to each point and not committing to each angle. Where well, we had seen there that two members of the Broncos were holding down strictly on a point for plant. But Heaven was not something that they had someone in. But they knew that there was no point for them to watch that angle because, again, everyone everywhere else was covered. And, again, holding someone else on B just to make sure that someone tried to rotate over there. Great call across the map. That's actually the second time that Lycan has lurked in the mailroom and gotten himself uh, an easy kill when the rest of the team has rotated to A. Um, and it may have actually scared Sacramento off from an A site as nobody is even remotely looking that direction at wow. the moment. They are all looking straight down mid as the wall comes out and goes down almost as quickly. They're going to peek. The paranoia will come out and keep Booty oh, Real from getting this right now. Yeah, they're not going to get any kills. And they are going to just push in. What a flick. You're kidding me. Wow. Gets another one. Another one. He's going to go for a third one as well. Maybe going to consider maybe a little bit of this pressure waiting for the teammates to be there to back him up. A lot of damage being given. Look at the health bars of Sacramento. They do not have a lot of fuel to fight with right now, but it is two versus four, and these two players, again, can do some phenomenal work. It's now just a... No, it is. It's a nice trade elimination here for the side of Sacramento, putting it almost at a 2v2 even fight, and they do still have the spike, so it's not something that the Broncos can just passively hold. They need to be a little bit uh, cautious and yet proactive at the same time to maybe get this spike removed from the side of Sacramento. Yeah, you can see once again, Lycan is waiting on that lurk. He's not content to just wait for enemies to rotate away and oh, then the retake. Oh, I love the ropes. They're going to go up the ropes. Booty Bandito is waiting. He'll get what one with shot. that off of his. Lycan will get one, and there's just one remaining for the side of Sacramento. It's just Quiz on that Reyna. Oh. Looking in the wrong direction, and Booty Bandito does miss the shot, even with a perfect lineup and his enemy looking away. Way. He's now holding the long angle on A, and there is not time for Quiz to rotate. He has Spike, but Ten needs to go left. down now, or this round is over. Does not know that someone's there waiting. Fantastic call from Bandito, making sure, hey, I can't really contest in this close range situation with the op. Let me go full send back to A and get this taken care of. I think that was a four piece for the side of that operator, by the way. That thing's getting some, some nice scratch marks in the side for the kill count. Absolutely. Booty Bandito with six kills and two deaths, only five rounds into this game at the top of the leaderboard for both teams. Although that said, he's tied with Dreammaker in your hat for kills. So the Broncos spreading out their frags quite nicely, getting everybody all the ult points that they need. 
and I, I think it's so cool. I think now when, you know, within given time, a lot of these agents kind of come to full fruition on what they can do for a team. Killjoy is such an interesting scouter in the sense that the turret will auto lock on whatever it needs to. And it looks like another full five cent for the side of Sacramento. We'll be able to maybe get some people here when they need to. But unfortunately, oh. they're in the welcoming arms of your hat, who's almost going to know. They do pick up the three piece almost immediately. Now it's a three versus two fair trades for the side of Sacramento. Another one as well, going over to the side of them as well. In addition to that, now it's just a two versus two. And you got to look at the ult economy right now. They are so close to maybe using the Cypher ult to maybe scout out the remaining two members. Fortunately, they weren't in range for the initial eliminations to get those hats placed. But it might be enough for them. They're going to walk into, unfortunately, a nice 1v1 gunplay from the side of BSU. And they're going to continue to push forward. It does not look like Lycan wants to stop just yet. Going to continue to even do the bunny hop to get that maximum speed. Not necessary, though, <laughs> since it does look like Soldier is just going to continue to just frag out. And they want a piece of the pie up there at the top of the leaderboard. You can see Lycan was lurking once again. He was. They knew that there was all an A site send. They had vision on all five members, but still Lycan remained at A because he wants to get those lurk kills for people who try to rotate through mid. And he wasn't able to rotate, or you know, didn't choose to rotate, excuse me, uh, until they knew that there was only one character remaining for the side of Sacramento and uh, that Soldier already had a bead on him so that he could flank him from the other side. So they're very committed to this like and I was going to say, Sacramento is is uh, almost naysaying the wise words of Albert Einstein, almost trying to defy the definition of insanity, continuing to do the same thing over and over again and continuing to get a free elimination here for the side of the Broncos. Now they're conceding mid. A nice three-piece here for the side, liking the, the lurker work will pay off. And now it's just one versus three. The ropes might be heavily guarded, but it's still something that Darian needs to be careful about using. No one's here necessarily on back the ropes. Up. Gonna maybe have to go back up, but he's doing the full speed means he's alerting everybody, and they were able to use the auditory cue to immediately rotate and punish that. Broncos again holding very stalwart so far, and now they're six to one so far in this map. Yeah, it's starting to run away with things on the defending side. Now, there have been a lot of changes to split over, you know, the nearly year since Valorant has been out. Um, they have tried to make some changes to make this a little bit less uh, defender sided. There are people who will tell you left and right, uh, yes and no, as to whether or not this map is still defender sighted. Um, that remains to be a debate. But 6 and 1, regardless of defense or attack sighted, is a score lead you would not like to be giving away for free if you're Sacramento. Nice shots everywhere. No one's going to falter just yet, which is kind of uncommon with how combative these two like teams like to play. Going to go for that shoulder jiggle as you so much affectionately named it before. Almost suffering, though, in this hallway. Nice hold here from the side of Bandito, knowing that someone's still here. It's still respecting the fact that Sacramento can push this angle. And in the meantime, it does not look like... Uh it doesn't look like any of them have the spike, actually. The spike is actually rotating through mid, where the, the, the rolling thunder has just gone down from Dreammaker. Bandito, with the trigger discipline, will not take a shot at the shoulder jump peak on the side of Sacramento, and will wait until he knows he can get a kill. That does not inform them ahead of time that there is an op being played at that angle. And a great play from the side of him means he'll get two as he takes down another one on that long angle. But two players for the Broncos have gone down in mid. Bandito has to get out of there before he gets pinned down in the angle that his op is not good at. So they are at a man disadvantage, although one player for Sacramento is very low. Your hat with the lurk may be able to find some kills on this flank. He'll get one. He almost gets nice. two, but Quiz will heal himself up using that Reyna ability. And now it's just Bandito with the op. One versus two. He has the gun to do it, but he needs the right angle. And it's, the time is going to be shortly of the essence. I'm sure that's a spike. Yep. Starting that spike plant, which will kind of kick things into gear. I wonder if Bandito will swap guns here for one that is more kind of close range favored. But again, now that the beeping has started, there is only a matter of time before they can get themselves there for that defuse. And I am almost guaranteeing that uh, Sacramento's watching as many angles as humanly possible, except maybe right behind them. Bandito trying to look for something here. Going to go for the slow rotation back to the backside of A. But it could be something that's expected. Someone could be in heaven watching. Beeping's getting a little bit faster. It's not towards the end point. They actually get rotated behind. Proactivity here from the side of the Broncos was just a little bit slow, but when you're put in a 1v2 situation, you do still have to play that cautious and methodical. Yeah, Quiz with the backstab.
backstab there, just waited, you know, had a little bit of use that game sense that he had to figure that he hadn't seen anybody try to peek through heaven. They must have been going towards screens, so he takes the swing and gets himself an easy headshot kill. That's just going to happen sometimes. That's part of playing Valorant, but great game sense on the side of Quiz to know that somebody was probably coming from that direction as he hadn't seen anybody come through ropes or heaven. So, well played from him. Uh, I do like the fact that they're not completely bunching up as five. We saw a little bit more of a split effort from the side of Sacramento, which ended up in their benefit. When they continue to put people in places oh like these, it's just shooting fish in a barrel. And this guy's got his fishing pole and level 99 fishing <laughs> here. He's not done yet. Can we get the ace here on the op? I don't know. It does look like that sent Sacramento scrambling towards maybe a different plan. But in the meantime, that spike is now dropped in a place that's uh, not very safe. <laughs> that's the four piece. Can we see the ace on the op? That we'll was beautiful. Quiz is the only one to remaining. To push forward. Nice here elimination trade. Quiz got the heal. Gonna get a reset here, not able to get anything more just yet. Gonna blind themselves? Unfortunately, no, not that. It's actually the Brimstone gonna get things set here. Nice, fantastic look. The updraft will be met with nothing but Bullets Killjoy gonna be put down here. No, actually still full health. And they are gonna continue to try and get some angles, maybe some exit kills, but it's three versus one. They actually don't get another one, and they do suffer another casualty. Putting Boise State up, now seven to two. That was, first of all, a clinic on how to play the op from Soldier there. That was beautiful. Getting exactly what he needed. Even continuing to, you know, repeak the same angle. Just has the foresight and knowledge of knowing when a reload is coming in. When it's safe, it gets what he needs. It's beautiful on that side. But then, uh, you know, uh, Quiz is almost able to bring that back with the use of the Empress. I was a little bit worried about that early usage of the Empress, but almost is able to make it work. You know, you get one kill, you can start chaining that into more kills using that ability. But, you know, just over time, gets tagged up way too much through those boxes, not able to get what he needs. And, you know, the, at that point, they know where you are. They can just wall bang until they get you. So unfortunate there for Quiz. But well played and a good effort. Like him get the spray through the smoke. Try and find what he needs, get a little bit of a tag on some people, but he will get tagged himself. He will get some damage off from that grenade. Your hat gonna send in some bullets of his own, pick up two kills, and now the Ooh. Killjoy ult goes in, forcing all the members of Sacramento to get back. And they're gonna continue to push and know exactly where the exterior rim of this ultimate is. They're gonna make sure to catch Sacramento with their pants down, knowing that they're here waiting for the ultimate to expire, but it's not enough as a swarm of Bronco State members will continue to push forward. And uh, again, the way that they use this Killjoy is so fascinating because it's almost surveillance exclusive. They use the turret to realize, I can't see anyone through the smoke, but my turret can. The moment that they do, you see them start lobbing as many blind fires as possible. They do lose out on this 1v1, unfortunately, but so much work being done by this ultimate, meaning that the area can't be pressured. And yeah, most players do what they can to say, okay, we'll just sit by the Killjoy ult because it's the closest thing towards our objective. Broncos, knowing that that's the case, going to continue to storm that area. And I love that crossfire play there from Dreammaker and Your Hat. They've got, they're playing two separate angles, looking into that A lobby right there. And that means that as soon as somebody, and they just have the game sense and the coordination together to know that as soon as somebody turns to peek one of the angles, they're there You're and they're waiting on me. one of the other angles. Oh, wow. That was so close. He will go down and drop that off in the process. Sacramento may decide to pick it up, but before he does, he wreaks some havoc with that baby. Three versus two. And these players are remaining here on the side of Sacramento are ones that are very confident in even a member disadvantage turns the team. Are they going to be able to do anything about it? They're going to go for the spike plant. This could be huge. It forces Boise State in action. It's going to get the ultimate committed, but in the meantime, they're going to be taken out, evening things up to a nice two versus two. Vikings got to be careful. There's someone now lurking for him. Something of a roll swap. He's going to be able to pick one up. He does while they're falling down, but he will falter. And now it's just your hat versus the world. And the world is specifically just as oh. one player. He does actually win out the 1v1, going for the defuse, and Boise State will finally... Oh, they're going to look He's for the gonna op. He's going to pick up. He's going to pick, gonna pick, pick the up, op up. Yep. What an incredible play. Smart decision as well. That just goes to show you that, you know, when it comes to gun gunfights, Boise State's got that box checked. When it comes to game knowledge, they got that box checked as well. And, uh, you know, let's go ahead and check the 9-2 to two box as well. Yeah, so we've only got one round remaining in this half before we switch back over. Last it remains to be seen whether the Sacramento half. will be able to get anything done on the uh, defending half of this mm -hmm. map. Maybe they will. Maybe they just, their playstyle leads them more to defending on this side. What? 
What? We nearly had a triple op buy for the side of the Broncos there. They ended up <laughs> getting rid of one of those, but that would have been... Awesome. I mean, it is the last round of the half. It they, would be awesome. Who cares about Eco in this round, I suppose, but that is a very gutsy play. They're I gonna mean, line up. if anything, if, if you could pick any adjective for the side of this Bronco roster, wouldn't it be gutsy? Oh, it absolutely would. This peak that they've continued to take with the op in the garage has worked for them time and again, regardless of how much Sacramento seems to be expecting They're double it. double holding this hallway with double ops. There's one. Is he going to get the second? He'll send out the blind first. Oh, oh not, gonna, so not able close. to hit the flick. Jumping classic comes out. Here comes the knives. They're tight. Five tiny little ops. Broncos are now four versus four, though. In the meantime, yes, they're trying to do some interesting things here in this hallway for the site, but in the meanwhile, they are suffering casualties on the other side of the map. And the spike is still being held here for the side of Sacramento, but uh, unfortunately, there's only one other player now able to defend it besides the spike carrier themselves, and it's a two versus four against the very large order that is the Broncos. It's almost... Uh, it's almost similar to an eating challenge. You have those places that have like those monstrous burgers or steaks, and one of the you know kind of br brave customers tries to say, "I can uh, I can eat all this." Uh, the Bronco team might be a little bit too much to swallow here as they continue to dominate this, and now a two versus three. Are getting themselves whittled down here in terms of numbers and could be just ultimately that cast the curse that's happening, but not just yet, as your hat will continue to show up, picking up the last two eliminations and now the swap. This is where we can finally say whether or not this Switching map sides. is uh, defender heavy. If the Broncos have a difficult time accessing a win on this map now that they've swapped over to Assault, then evidently it could be the case that it is defender heavy. I just want to highlight that incredible play from your hat right there. You know, he was in a 1v2 at that point. That should have been a fight that goes the way of Sacramento. But your hat plays the angles in such a way that he isolates each player individually. He gets one player in his crosshairs, he takes that player out. He gets over to the other side, gets himself reset, and then takes another separate fight against the other, you know, the other player for Sacramento. So he takes two individual 1v1s, yeah. where Sacramento were hoping for a 2v1 just because of his position. That's the thing though, right? It's, it's both a huge credit and, and, you know, compliment to your hat, but uh, a huge question mark as to why Sacramento couldn't turn that into a 2v1. Yeah, they wanted to go in just a little bit faster than they did, and your hat was just waiting for them in an, an angle they didn't quite expect. As Broncos take full control immediately of a site. And this is going to have to be a full 5v5 retake for the side of Sacramento. The spike goes down immediately as Sacramento are getting in position to punt, pinch in onto the site from multiple different angles. They've got some going through Garage, they've got some going through CT, and they've got one watching up in Heaven. Now, Lycan, as ever, is on the lurk. He'll know that there's someone there thanks to his turret. He gets And they're none the wiser. Nice one piece. Almost converted it to the two, but information given will be information gathered for the Broncos. They know where one member might be challenging from, and I think they have a good idea where the rest are. It's now, unfortunately, up to Sacramento to continue to take out the remaining members, and they are doing so in stride. It's now two versus two. Boys, this is going to be huge for them. They're able to get another flank, but the wherewithal on that side of things was given over a nice amount of elimination spread across, and the Broncos will actually take this round. Beautiful play. I absolutely love the way that Dreammaker picks up the gun that he needs and then holds in Garage. He has the ability and probably even the know-how to pick that peak into, you know, through Garage Long into the A site, but he holds and he waits in that position because he knows that if his teammate can take a little bit of attention away from him, he can push up there for free, get a crossfire, and they take out the spike uh, you know, the spike planter, the one defending the spike before anything can even be done about it, just because of their incredible teamwork as the blind goes in. Blind. Kaizen Strife can't see a thing as Booty Bandito tailwinds forward and takes him down. Quiz answers back onto Lycan with one of his own using that stinger. Boise State have near total control of the A site already as one has retreated into screens and another, yeah, he'll get one. Quiz will get it, not one more with his stinger and then retreat using that dismiss. Booty Bandito holding heaven all on his lonesome. He'll get one, he'll get two wow. and retreats into the smoke keeping himself safety, and there's just two remaining for the side of Sacramento. They've got the Rays and they've got the Reyna. We're looking to enter from Heaven and Screen separately. They know where one is, potentially the second, as this retake is going to have to be beautiful from the side of Sacramento. It is so far. They get one. Dreamaker goes down to a headshot. Bandito unable to land the shots that he needs. The wall keeping Reyna out as Soldier with the Bulldog gets one. Heel comes through. 
The flank is coming, and Soldier oh, gets what he needs. Goodness. The Bulldog takes him down. Quiz goes down to a headshot health. with 14 health remaining on Soldier as the Broncos pick up. Match point. Uh, Match point. I, I feel that's necessary to remind the people at home that don't know that uh, neither team can see these silhouettes indicating where these players are. The reason we can, of course, is we're spectating. This is our job. But I have to mention the fact that every time these Bronco players are making a proactive play, they are completely forcing Sacramento to sprint across the entire map because they're on the other side post up. That's why it's so important to make sure that you vary up your strategies mm -hmm. because, you know, Boise State generally tended to understand that Sacramento was going to go for a mid to A hit on almost, or yeah, mid to A hit on almost every round. They were able to position themselves before the round, before that, because they were expecting it. Boise State varies their strategy and the very the tempo that they, they enact that strategy so much that Sacramento have to rotate after a fight has happened, not before, and that puts them at a disadvantage. Quick challenge here from this side of the point. Going to be able to pick up a quick one. Looking for angles. I love how conservative they are while checking these angles, not exerting any effort to push forward until everything's clear. The all clear is given. More members are oh. falling through the sky and they're falling to the ground. They're going to push forward to daggers. This could be the final nail in the coffin. They're going to push forward more. Not able to get those crucial shots landed just yet and actually be taken down. Now it's three versus one. And it is just this one player quiz versus the world. He will be found out, but he's invisible. The knife will come out and he's actually able to get it. He attempts a little to bit knife. of a DM here from the knife play, but it's one versus two. That's forcing Sacramento into a very dangerous and nigh impossible position, but we've seen impossible things here happen on this stream and it's possible we're going to see it again. Here comes the blind around the corner. Going to go for the shots. It's going to be able to pick up one and it's a 1v1 now. Sacramento can turn this around. Baiting out this defuse forcing Boise State to respond. They do pick it up and that's the clutch for Sacramento. They take Boise State at their will and shut them down. He doesn't have time. It happens, but it happens win. without time to defuse. Gee dang it. So Boise State end up taking both rounds, a quick 2-0 for them, playing time in that final round just to get the W they need over Sacramento. They're going to pick this one up. They're going to pick up a huge boost in confidence after taking down the second placed winner of last fall's tournament, and they are going to move on. Well done, Boise State. I mean, they did it, but they also did it with a, a tremendous amount of style as well. I can't believe there was an attempted knife kill in such an important <laughs> round. Such an important round. I can round. believe it. That's gutsy right there. Goes for the BM knife kill. That's for that gutsy adjective. It almost comes back to bite them, too. That would have been an easy kill. You know, if you notice right there, Quiz did not have his gun out. Mm -hmm. It was in the middle of a reload, so that would have been a quick kill and an easy win for Boise State. But the BM nearly costing them that round there. But, I, hey, they're up by so many rounds, I suppose. They feel they can afford it at that point. <laughs> Just to remember that Boise State is always looking for talented players, production, and broadcast talent. Top talent, along with good grades and eligibility, can earn scholarships as well. Sign up today by visiting boisestate.edu slash esports for more information. We'd sure love to have you be a part of this uh, production squad here. We're a great organization. We have fun. We, uh, a we have a good time. Fun, yeah. <laughs> We've got an arcade <laughs> machine just over there. You can play all kinds of arcade games. It's great. You also be humiliated on that box, as I have been many a time, and it won't be my last time either. Now, there's some Tetris fiends in this production team. Mm -hmm. I tell you what. Scary. Scary good. Oh, I want to talk about that match, though. Did you have any fear at all when that, that, uh, bad, that bad manners knife came out at the end? Did you Absolutely. Think, you I think almost even bring called it, it to the side of Sacramento, except for the time there for the, for the defuse was just too much. And... You know, when it, when it comes down to it, there's a, a lot of question marks. Again, more shining moments than the previous map. I think Sacramento really made a lot more adaptations, but they were also almost stubborn in the sense that they continued to force one angle. They continued to try and say, okay, well, all of our cards are over here. We don't have any more cards in hand. This is all we have. If instead they continue to keep one or two up their sleeve, such as the Broncos do, they might end up actually starting getting you know, a lot more traction in these maps. I kept waiting for Sacramento to try you know, a blind into Sage Wall push mm -hmm. through Garage, and it just never happened. They kept on trying to get mid control first, no matter how many times it didn't work out for them. And so I just think there was a little bit of inflexibility that came back to bite them in that round. And they may want to take back, we'll watch the VODs for that, take a look at the tape and see what they can do better in their next map to be a little bit more flexible, take a different approach when things aren't working out for them. Yeah, the only, it, 
<laughs> this is going to sound so dumb. They need to be more like water and less like a mountain. You need to be flexible, malleable, go with the flow, the current, rush down when possible and rescind when, when necessary. Whereas, you know, just keeping themselves in one place at one time, keeping that rigidity, it's not going to end up working for you in this kind of game. That was beautiful, beautiful sentence. Yeah, I love the poetry. Imagery is what they call it. Yeah. It's a literary device. Well, that was a wonderful <laughs> first match for Boise State. We are going to have another match for you coming up right <laughs> after this one. You get two. But before that, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to look at the top five from that previous match right before that. So don't go anywhere, because there's another Valorant match coming up for you right after this. Take two. will auto lock on whatever it needs to and it looks like another full five send for the side of sacramento will be able to maybe get some people here when they need to but unfortunately oh. they're in the welcoming arms of your hat who's almost going to know they do pick up the three piece almost immediately now it's a three versus two fair trades for the side of sacramento hard into a site and immediately going to plant the spike no hesitation no hesitation here comes some more smokes possibly trying to give some opportunity for the broncos to recontest here comes the ultimates out from everywhere it's going to be a huge amount of damage and control broncos are going to kiss feed themselves back onto the point and yes sacramento got the plant but beyond that they really gave but They've favored that pick just now as they're going to get the info. That is an A hit. Everyone's going to rotate. Bandito peeks out of the smoke and gets That's two. so smart. Going back into the smoke for cover. Getting peeked out again. It's a jack in the box. And it's a nightmarish one for the side of Sacramento. Only one member remaining. Let's see if they are able to sleep tonight. That will give them some Z's in the bank. Another set of there will be. You will get some damage off from that grenade. Your hat gonna send in some bullets of his own, pick up two kills, and now the Killjoy ult goes in, forcing all the members of Sacramento to get back. And they're gonna continue to push and know exactly where the exterior rim of this ultimate is. They're gonna make sure to catch Sacramento with their pants down, knowing that they're here waiting for the ultimate to expire, but it's not enough. Minute. Uh, looks like one possible Sheriff being highlighted, but no, they're gonna go all classic, which Come means on. This is almost a sure win for Boise State this round, guarding, barring any heroics from the side of Sacramento. Sacramento they're gonna five deep, they're gonna be two picked up, three picked up, four! Oh. One more, and that's the full piece, but unfortunately, the slice just... NationalGuard.com to begin your guard adventure. Legendary parts for legendary wins.
are a couple lessons I've learned over the years. Friendships come in all shapes and sizes. And always buckle up. Seatbelts save lives. That's a rule we can all live by. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Boise State Game Pants Esports Arena. This is our coverage of the NECC Collegiate Valorant regular season. We're marching on up through those regular weeks and soon we'll be in the playoffs, hopefully a championship. Joining me on the desk tonight is Jared Baratel Castiglione. I am Tim Voiceless Whitman and we are bringing you your second match of the night, a matchup between the Broncos and the winners of last fall's uh, Valorant Championship. Baratel, I want to start you off with a real quick question. We saw that last game. We saw the Broncos' aggression. Do you think that the top team from last fall's uh, tournament is going to be able to punish that aggression in this upcoming game? I don't know. <laughs> I think it's more of a question as to whether or not this team that they're facing off will be able to beat them or match them in gun expertise. A lot of the time, the aggressive plays for the Broncos end up giving them a huge advantage because they are incredibly accurate with their guns that they take to the fight. And uh, they use the advantages of those 1v1s, turning them into 1v2 successes and giving their team a nicer time to secure things when there's less people to worry about on that enemy team. We've also, I feel like the Broncos have improved their strategic play a little mm -hmm. bit from what we saw last fall quite a bit. Absolutely. I felt like most of last season, they spent a lot of time relying on their expertise with gunplay to get them the wins that they needed. But we've seen a lot of really smart strategic play helping them out big time so yeah. far this season. That lurk from Lycan, all the split game we just watched was beautiful. The rotations they make, the angles they choose to take, it's all... We're coalescing together to make just an incredible team to Imagine watch. Imagine what practice does. It's interesting. It's huh? crazy. <laughs> just a reminder for everybody of our rules tonight. This is the Valorant NECC League. We've got a nine-week series of 30-plus teams. They play in best-of-three matches. Those matches take place on set maps that are decided each week. The home team gets to pick their opening side, so attacker or defender, for the first and potentially third map of the series. The away team gets to pick their, their opening side, attacker or defender, for the second game in the series. The Broncos are highly ranked. They are in the upper bracket of this NECC Valorant divisions. They're in the champions bracket. But do not sleep on these challengers and emergence brackets because we expect to see some big upsets coming from some of these teams that are ranked just a little bit lower. They might uh, surprise you in what they can do. And that's always such an interesting thing. When it comes to, of course, the Boise State University program, we're, we're pretty... I would, I'm not trying to toot our own horn or anything, but some, some people, at least some people have heard of us, and a lot of what we have in terms of coverage is, is pretty out there. You do have to, of course, subscribe for some VODs, but some of these teams, we have yet to hear of their program, and, and it's so cool to have a lot more uh, inclusivity when it comes to these kinds of tournaments because that just means that there's more competition. The bigger this gets, the better for everybody, it's, as far as I'm concerned. You know, if we get more Valorant to watch and the scene gets more fans, more viewers. That's a, nothing but a good thing as far as you ask me. Absolutely. So taking a look at our Boise State team tonight, we have Bandito is Ethan Cobb. Dreammaker is Luke Edwards. Soldier, or Legit Soldier, as his full screen name, is Jack Wilcox. Lycan, Blake Ramsey, played that lurk in the last game to incredible effectiveness. And your hat is Seth Banta. Who now, we have, the question must be answered, does he play any characters without a hat? Without a hat. So far, at least I'm going to stake my name on it. I don't think so. And if they are, they're no longer allowed to. I'm, I want to see this. I haven't paid close enough attention to the, the characters that he may or may not play, but we'll be very interested to see if the hat trend will continue for your hat out there. Now, this is the matchup. Boise State versus Cal State Dominguez Hills. They were the champions last fall of the NACE Collegiate Valorant Tournament, taking down Sacramento, who we just played, in a reverse sweep for the title. They could be a tough one to beat. This should be a bit of a fire starter. And that, that's something that can give a lot of worry to the side of the Broncos as well, namely because they usually come out of the box swinging, the full momentum. Uh, but the moment that, you know, if Dominguez Hills can make those kind of adaptations, they might suffer the same fate as you know, Sacramento with that reverse sweep. Yeah, we'll be very interested to see if they can keep Boise State off balance and, uh, you know, lead that into some wins for them. We're going to move quickly over here to Doc's keys to the game. 
Doc's Keys to the Game are brought to you by Count. Count's Identity Trust Global Network delivers real-time fraud prevention, account protection, and enables personalized customer experiences for more than 9,000 leading brands. Doc's Keys to the Game in Valorant are Watch Your Corners. You gotta keep those angles clear, everything, so you don't get caught out. Be ready to trade teammates. Yeah, sometimes you gotta sacrifice a teammate, but you better be ready to get kills out of it in, in exchange. And don't be afraid to use your ultimates, because you'll get them back faster than you think. Those ultimates do come online fast, and they can have a round-changing effect. So, very valuable. I think out of these boxes, they checked every one of them. I mean, I, I didn't see opportunity where they didn't uh, try to make themselves privy to you know, corners that they could have kind of succumbed to. Uh, so that's, that's something that they've definitely worked on and continue to, of course, chip away at. And Split's going to be the first map for this matchup, so this is going to be really interesting whether or not we see the same exact lineup for at least the Bronco side of things. It does look like they're running with that as of right now. Everyone locked except for Soldier, who is hovering the Sage, which is what he played last time. So they may have a mirror comp. This may be just their, their standard comp that they like to play on Split. And hey, if it works for them as well as it worked in their last Split game, then more power to them. And this looks like it means that uh, they have the only Select wall so agent. far enabled. Uh, Sans, of course, the firewall, but that doesn't really count. You don't have to shoot through that. You just have to, you know, incinerate yourself to go through. But interestingly enough, it does look like Dominguez Hills is uh, opting for their own Killjoy, which we, we've seen great success on for the side of the Broncos. I wonder if the, the Bulls are going to be able to pull that same side of success. Yeah, Dominguez Hills actually only sharing only one agent with the Broncos right now. Only that Killjoy being played on both teams. The rest of it is looking completely different for both sides. So No, no, no. You're missing one. Am I missing one? Who am I missing? It's a man without a hat. It's got a, a cool Oh, it's Breach. It's Breach. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's got the cool little robo arm. Yes, it's <laughs> Breach. He was lined up in a different position vertical to the Breach on the Broncos, so I just... No Sky. I'm disappointed, guys. Come on. No Sky, no Viper. No one likes the agents that I like. I mean, Sky actually has seen some play on this map, so there is a possibility we may see some Sky in the future, just waiting for some team, hopefully the Broncos, to find out how great she can be on this map. I already love you, Broncos, but if you want me to love you more, play Sky, like, one time. One map. Just play Sky one map. Waiting to see if this pistol round is going to go the way of the Broncos. They have bought quite heavily. Um, Pretty much all the abilities that they can. I don't see much being saved in the way of money for the Broncos. Lycan is watching this short B angle through Garage. Going to throw out a uh, Swarm Grenade. And if uh, once he hears the spike go down, he'll activate that to try and keep them from planting. As the rest of the Broncos know that this is a full A hit, or B hit, excuse me. And they are all going to rotate up through to heaven, trying to get as much down as they can in terms of damage. Getting out of that fire as quick as possible. There goes the spike plant. The Broncos still being denied from this vision. Gonna go for some shots now that they're able to find some things. Gonna fall down. Nice side win. We'll get the pick and another one there on the backside as well. Three members remain here for the side of Dominguez. And they must start running for the hills. No, they're gonna fight things out. A fourth one going down. Do not give Boise State the fifth flawless of the night. They are gonna give it away. And there's the defuse. They're gonna share it. Fantastic call from the Broncos. What reservation to not go into things blind and then continuing flawless. to win out these gun trades. A flawless, the fourth one of the night. I got a little excited. It's not the fifth one just yet, but that's still possible. I honestly can't fault anything that Dominguez Hills did in that round. Their use of smokes and util to keep the Broncos from seeing anything of value was incredible. It felt like the Broncos were completely blind for a good 30 seconds standing in heaven trying to find anything of value, but they just couldn't get anything. Mm. But once those smokes expired, the Broncos had such an incredible retake. They had that tailwind to keep uh, out, uh, keep um, Bandito out of danger and get up those early two kills. Puts them in the advantage to just get the kills they need for the rest of the round. Great play from Dominguez Hills. A little bit better play from the Broncos. A great strategic play, but this might end up being what most teams falter in when it comes to facing off this Bronco squad is just not being able to get the shots where they need to. Going to pick up the ultimate orb. You usually don't see that being accessed from the defending team. Going to be something that again, there goes one quick one here for the side of the Broncos and Dominguez Hills is now down a member. They still have the spike though, which means that they can still continue to be a bit proactive. Soldier trying to get this cheeky wall high ground play, not being able to be the first thing most people look at and also kind of 
sheltering off that high ground for accessibility from Dominguez Hills. And the Bulls are now trying to find themselves an angle to contest, but that's all that's going to happen. Here comes some of those shock waves through the wall. Not be able to get much, but uh, information I think has been given over saying, hey, I think some guys are over here. And they certainly are. The marshal will be used here. Going to go for some damage. Going to get some here as well. Going to go for the long shots. It's just one member remaining. You know, exactly, exactly where he where is, too. The spike's also there. Uh, well, luckily they did end up getting someone, because that would have been the fifth flawless of the night, and that's uh, that's uncalled for, Broncos. I question a little bit the purchase of the Marshall, not no, because no, it no, wasn't no. used to great effect. I, I don't question the fact that uh, the Broncos feel they can use the Marshall. I just question the fact that it was bought at all because it's not my favorite gun in the world. That's just one caster's opinion. Uh, Bandito, I think, is kind of uh, king of holding long angles right now. First one to buy the op. Uh, but the Marshall is just a baby op until they can afford the big boy. And I think that's a good call. Um, of course, they've rescinded that here for maybe challenging shorter angles. It looks like that's the call here. Gonna get blinded. Gonna be shrouded in smoke as well. Gonna put down their own smoke. Keep themselves safe. A nice side dash to avoid that grenade. Could have been disastrous for them for them to eat that damage. Here, are gonna beat some damage as well. Down to 14. Gets eliminated. Fantastic and full clip commitment here in the smoke. Not able to find anything. Gonna able to get one eventually. Lycan picking up the two piece on the backside. And now it's 3v2. Broncos, Broncos initially looking like they were in trouble there. Started to lose control of the site and had a couple players go down. Now they have full control over the sight lines that they need. They're going to go for a split retake angle from all three angles. One heaven, one screens, and probably one from the other side. As Dreammaker oh, is going through screens you. and they do not know that he's here. Oh, they do. He's there now. The quick flick from Gambare will take him down with a headshot and Dominguez Hills will actually come away with the win. Well done them. Yeah, they held both of the longest angles there conceding that point. Knowing that the, the spike was already planted in a place that couldn't be contested. Forced themselves out of being holed down in that point itself. Getting themselves to those angles. Gave them the edge, and the Broncos not really pushing uh, all three sides at once. Gave them the opportunity to be picked off one at a time. Well done from Dominguez Hills. They did not panic when they were down a couple players. They compiled the angles that they knew they could hold and dared the Broncos to push into them, and it worked out very well for them. It was a very impressive set play for them, but they are not going to repeat it. They are instead cheating completely. Nice They're completing cheatly. Completely. Che cheating uh, completely towards the... A site here, or sorry, the B site here, as all the players have moved between market and garage. Dreammaker will send out a couple blinds and try and get an early kill, but will be unsuccessful. They have taken complete control of mid now. A boombot sent up through mailroom will not catch anybody to kill, but they will know there is somebody watching that angle. So Dominguez Hills may opt to rotate themselves away from garage through up through mid and then through ropes to A, where Booty Bandito is waiting to catch somebody who comes up those ropes. Nice conservative play. That seems to be more of the typical fashion. And uh, unfortunately, the Broncos now have to play that pace because they're not the ones making the proactive moves, considering that they're on defense. Uh, that could uh, all change when they get to the assault or attacker phase. Uh, but right now, waiting for that crucial 40 seconds to go by. And now, as you can clearly see, the pieces start falling into place here for Dominguez Hills. And these could be mighty pieces as well. Going to be met by some opposition. Bandito going to dash into the smoke set up by the team. Going to continue to spray blindly through the smoke, making sure he wasn't challenged without some punish. And a nice quick one down could give them enough advantage to continue to sweep this. No one challenging just yet. Two members of Boise State will continue to push there on the backside, but they will be met with some opposition. A nice trade of kills there. We'll give over a huge advantage now to the Broncos as they continue to force down a lot of these angles. And now it's three versus one. Gets the final elimination. Defenders win another round, and it's three to one. But I don't think that Dominguez Hills is making too many crucial mistakes. No, Booty Bandito just picks up a 4K in that round. Just being in the right place at the right time at every single second. He even got himself pounced on at the bottom of A and just managed to hit the flick in time to get the kill, regardless of the fact that he was the one who had been taken by surprise. So just the gunplay, once again, bailing Boise State out there of, wow, well, well, that's you falling down see the that. Uh, does it still work there? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Will it just be underground, like a nice little disco lamp or I don't disco know. floor? It's not a swarm grenade. It's the alarm bot. So can it get out to trigger onto somebody if it's underground? Who knows? It's just screaming from the sewer. Someone, someone's near me. That's. I want to see if that goes off now. 
Another five commit over here. Does not matter. The alarm given over by the turret will be huge. At least giving an indication that one here members. A nice one-two challenge. He's going to take nice pop shots. Gets a two-for-one trade. And they could not ask for anything better than that. Trading one-for-one is fantastic. Trading two-for-one, even better. Yeah, they're going to be down to three members against four. And they're still pinned inside garage because they don't know if anybody's watching any of the other angles. Of course, now there is. But at the moment, there was not. Dreammaker on the flank will peek and get one, one in one. market as he goes down himself. We're down to a 2v3, but the, the whistle has been blown. Broncos now know that Dominguez Hills are planning on rotating up through mid, possibly to A, possibly through mail room, but they're watching both like a hawk. Gotta be pretty careful. Nice damage traded over. Uh, unfortunately, even though it is considered a 2v3 with the Phoenix having ultimate, it could almost be a 3 versus 3. Take the one life, get a trade. Take your actual life, get another trade, and get it a 1v1. But uh, 30 seconds remaining on the clock, and it does not look left. like they want to be the ones making the big plays, considering that they're at such a disadvantage. Especially because the raise for the side of Dominguez Hills is a whisper's breath away from dying. Right That's there. One whisper. There's another whisper, but this one a little bit louder. Broncos shouting, hey, you want to make some moves? You better be ready to fight. Beautiful play from the Broncos there. They, There was a lot of momentum coming in from Dominguez Hills. You could tell that they had a set play plan of flashing themselves out, going through Garage, and then hitting at B with everything that they had. But the quick peek and the the early kills from Lycan just snip all of that momentum in the bud, and they're left with no game plan and have to try and get out and make one on the fly, and it does not play out well for them. You have five people contested by one person. You shouldn't lose one person. Uh, let alone losing two, you should instantly get everything traced on that one you know, defending person and take them out. But unfortunately, not the case. Going for a full effort here on the other side of the map. Broncos aren't able to get an elimination, trying to shoot blind and keep themselves safe while doing some damage. And they do so. The eliminations are being just kind of thrown out. Four immediately eliminated for the Broncos. And just one member of the Bulls left here. It is the Phoenix without the ultimate, which means they've technically died already, which means they're going to be able to do so again. Not yet, though. Here comes the blind up and around the corner. Going to be challenged by a lot of the Bronco members. Here comes a lot of that shockwave. Barely dodges out. That angle just too severe. Waiting for some kind of push here. He's going to be slowed by quite a lot. Uh -oh. the, the, <laughs> the swarm grenade will do so much damage. Someone else wanted to put the pinpoint in that elimination. And the Broncos now up, I do believe, 5-1. to one. Broncos highlighting the power of information right there. For casual viewers who may not understand just how much that matters, knowing exactly where that player was ahead of time allowed the Broncos to get that kill while putting themselves in a no-risk position. Not a single person, aside from Booty Bandito, who decided to take the, you know, take the play because he's a little bit aggro, consciously a little. <laughs> a little bit a little bit consciously had to put themselves in harm's way in order to get that kill they sent in the aftershock got him to move out of the way they sent in the slow field kept him from moving anywhere and then the swarm grenade went off and got all the damage they needed the broncos able to pick up essentially a free kill because of the power of information in that round two blinds going in from dream maker everybody in garage going to be halted with all of their progress three blinds going in man playing against breach can feel like you just are blind can't for days. Do anything. <laughs> they are going to peek themselves through garage. A slow field will come out, and they are going to move away. They're deciding they're not big fans. They may leave one behind to make some noise and cause some misdirection, but the rest of the members of Dominguez Hills are rotating themselves through mid. Although the spike is remaining in garage, so oh, as I say that, they're going to rotate backwards through market. So they have plans elsewhere. Going to leave garage for the time being, but once you say they're not fooled, Bandito gets one with the op. They know exactly that they're playing on mid now. The smoke comes out. Protects Bandito. He'll take an op shot, but it will not hit as Dreammaker is watching from mailroom. Going back to this challenge again, knowing that a lot of the resources have been expended. Three members versus one. This isn't something that the Boise State members are uncomfortable with, especially Lycan. Going to get found out, though, and that does appear to be the Razor getting one. Not exactly the most valuable ult, but they'll take it here, especially when they're having such a hard time finding eliminations. They are going to go for the spike plant, I, you'd assume soon because they're shortly running out of time there it goes they're gonna go full commit for the plant with a Spike nice planted. shot here again from the operator they're gonna go for the second one as well not gonna be able to get the secure there short range versus long range not too uh, successful for the side of the broncos it is now two versus two and ultimates are a plenty on the side of the Mega Hills. now making a three versus two here comes that clutch res and not a moment sooner as the remaining remaining. members of the broncos will falter they're going to go for the bait on the defuse. They did not realize that the ultimate had come out here for the res. It's going to be here. They're going to be able to find oh. him through the smoke. A fantastic shot. Four HP, and he actually clutches it out. Six to one, Broncos. Wow, that was so close for Dreammaker. A heartbreaker for Dominguez Hills. But Dreammaker 
with the foresight the to know. High secure. Yeah, wait, Gru to pick up the op, get that extra money online, and give it to uh, Bandito to get that give extra money. Give it to money. Bandito, you have to. <laughs> He'll get it done. He'll get it done with the op. Absolutely. But Dreammaker, having the foresight to understand that even though the paranoia comes out, he has a little bit of short range vision. He doesn't need to relocate and put himself in danger. He plays the short angle where he can just about see what he needs to see even through the paranoia, and ends up barely getting the kill he needs to send that round to Boise State. But that was that was a nail biter. That could have gone either way. Let's see how things are going to go. A nice hold against mid. Kind of just completely eliminating this as an option for the side of Dominguez Hills. And they are considering to maybe go somewhere else. Can, uh, while this point, this initial point challenge through Garage is just too heavily fortified by the Broncos. Nice eliminations being spread out. One versus two, giving the edge over to the Broncos. Grenade coming out. Going to get some chip damage. Now down to 61. That's only a few shots left on their health bar. But they do still have... No, they do not. They do not have the healer available for the remainder of the round. The only casualty the Broncos suffered was the one that can get someone back up to full HP. So this could be a huge advantage opportunity for the side of Dominguez. But if they walk into the... Dis Oh, it's so much distortion given by this character. It's almost unreal how much they impair your vision and ability to play the game. But both teams using it to great effect. The Broncos able to get an elimination out of it because of the push in, unfortunately, into that massive disorientation. Uh, beyond that, now the dust is kind of settled and it looks like you know, Dominguez Hills is trying to figure out a play of action be besides, you know, going down five members deep onto one point. They may try something a little bit different, but they are going to be spotted out from Dreammaker. And they are quickly trying to make sure that nothing of that can happen. It is possible that they're going to go for a desperation play here on this point. But as you can clearly see, one of the Broncos silhouettes is waiting long peak. And they do actually get punished. Unfortunately, Lycan, uncharacteristic, not able to get taken out there. And unfortunately, it does look like some sort of a... Oh! Oh my goodness, this guy can't miss. What is happening here? Oh, oh here comes the ultimate. Doesn't mean that if he can miss from the skies, he'll be taken out. And from heaven as well. That's an angel in the wings for the Broncos. I was worried that guy had some sort of uh, assistance with his aim there for a second. <laughs> no, that was incredible. Honestly, the, the, the decision from your hat to hold that ult, sometimes it can feel like you know where everyone is. So I'll just use the ult now. But the decision to hold it until he can use it to deny that plant gives the free round again to the Broncos. You know, they're up 4v1. In most scenarios, you're going to think that's an easy win. But some heroics from the side of Dominguez Hills puts that round back into question for the side of Boise State. And the use of that ult just puts it away. No harm done. They can move on to the next round knowing that they got what they needed from that one. A nice quick exchange of blows will leave both teams only four deep in terms of members. They get three for the side of uh, Dominguez Hills. The plant will come out and the Broncos are kind of reeling to get themselves in position to recontest this point. Here comes the ultimate. It's going to be so much and now the play is going to start. Here come the knives with the disorientation. But it's not going to be able to find anything just yet. More knives will be restocked. That's another pickup here for the side of Bandita. But he'll actually be taken out mid-air. Another mid-air elimination. And now only the plant remains to be diffused. You blinked an eye. You missed the whole thing, actually. I love the usage of the Rolling Thunder in that round because if you look at the usage of the Rolling Thunder, the round previous from the side of Dominguez Hills, it got them control of mailroom. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Which they immediately lost because they sent one aftershock, uh, one f fault line, sorry, one fault line through there. Uh, one fault line was sent through from uh, the breach player on the side of Boise State. And they get a kill, and then mailroom control is under contest again. So they didn't really get anything for their usage of um, Rolling Thunder in that round previous. By contrast, Boise State throws out, I think he's doing it on purpose. I, did that one didn't go in the grate, did it? I think it did. Anyway, it, it like morphed in there. As a, as a point of contrast, Boise State uses their Rolling Thunder in the round previous and takes complete advantage of it. They didn't know there was somebody lurking in screens, so one kill is traded out. That's unfortunate. But the Booty Bandito dashes in with the Tailwind and instantly gets the two kills he need using that distortion, and they get so much more control for the use of that ultimate than Dominguez Hills were able to get the round previous. Nice wherewithal here from the side of Dominguez Hills. Liking usually the solitary force to defend that point, but now all have been vacant in terms of the defense for the Broncos, and now they have to force a retake as the spike is now planted almost within a matter of a couple of seconds. The round starting, scrambling to find a way to get back onto the point. The rest of the team is floundering here as the biggest hills immediately set up shop, and they are uh, unfortunately closed for business for the Broncos.
Broncos in a little bit of trouble. Oh, Dominguez Hills, here. they're just playing all the right angles. They took all the right trades and the blinds coming in from the breach on Dominguez Hills, making sure the Broncos couldn't really fight back at any good point. And now your hat's in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, he's surrounded on all sides and had to do something or he was going to get peeked on and killed anyway. So good attempt from the Broncos. Better execution by Dominguez Hills. The blinds just keeping the Broncos off balance and getting the kills they need to get their second round win. And I, you have to question here just a little bit, you know, Lycan doing so well as that kind of solitary, isolated defender, um, kind of just went for a little bit more of a heaven to hallway uh, setup with the, most of their utility and just completely left that point isolated and immediately once isolated, got to take advantage of. So I don't think that the Broncos with the way that they adapt so quickly will let that happen again. Gonna look through this op and Brandigo's gonna get one. He made that to great effect. He used that to great effect in the Doesn't last one. Doesn't matter if through he's blind. The blind. He gets another one. That was a collab blind, I think. He almost gets a third, but Zero with an op of his own will take down Bandito before the trigger can be pulled, but it's still a 4v2 in favor of Boise State. The spike's still under control of Dominguez Hills, but they are waffling as to where they would actually like to go. They seem to have finally decided they want to go through Garage. The blind will come out. Force Dreammaker a little bit backwards from heaven. And now control of site proper is given to Dominguez Hill. They're going to plant, and Boise State will be forced to retake. But they will send in the shockwave, and they will send in a grenade to try and get as much as they can out of there. One goes down. Lycan. Oh my goodness, Lycan with the kill from one from a gun and the kill from the, uh, the, swarm, the grenade. swarm grenade is to get the other. Lycan gets both by himself. And Boise State will pick up a very convincing round win. They'll get the, they'll get the uh, defuse, and four players still alive means Broncos Eagle is looking real good. What a uh, informed decision to let Sage get the last pip as well. Uh, not really the most uh, aggressive agent in the game. Kind of set back to do as much utility work and healing as possible. They don't end up getting a lot of these pips for elimination, so giving it over to have that ultimate available quicker uh, is such a smart idea for the side of the Broncos. Yeah, grabbing an ult pip in this round plus a kill will give Legit Soldier the uh, the res that he needs, which may be a difference maker in this final round of the half. So we could be looking at a 10-2 half round for our half score for Boise State here. And then that's looking more likely as your hat gets a very early opening kill with a headshot through the smoke. Your hat's gonna spray a little bit more. But they know exactly that the push is coming all the way through to A as your hat gets three. Lycan gets one of his own, and there's only the omen remaining on the side of Dominguez Hills. He's got a 4v1, and he won't win it. So Boise State go into the half with a 10-2 scoreline. Just three rounds leaving, uh, separating Boise State from their first round win against Dominguez Hills on split. I do have to give the Bulls a huge uh, degree of compliments here in the sense that they are playing uh, with very similar pacing to that of the Broncos. We, we often see a lot of teams kind of suffer to the fact that the Broncos play so quickly and so forcibly, uh, but Dominguez Hills, they continue to force their own plays and uh, despite kind of, you know, losing so far 10-2, to two, the game's not over yet, um, they, they are pushing a lot of the Bronco players to their limits in, in, in means of 1v5ing, getting the rotations, the clutch that we saw uh, your hat and Dreammaker have to make to keep themselves up in a, up in score. A lot of these things wouldn't be possible if the Bulls weren't such a challenge. I'm honestly baffled by this, rat, this map so far because I don't feel like Dominguez Hills have been playing in such a way that would indicate a 10-2 score. You know, I don't think right. they're playing two, half, two rounds going into the half bad. I just think Boise State is able to counter what they're doing so well, and I honestly don't know what Dominguez Hills really needs to change in order to be a little bit more dominant here because, I mean, look at that. They go up two kills immediately into the round and still somehow end up in an even game. Looks like they're doing what they can to try and make things uh, advantageous for them. Three versus two now. Broncos being at the member deficit. Such an unfamiliar and uncomfortable position maybe for them. Going to get caught by fire. One player remaining is going to be just Dreammaker. And they can make dreams happen. They're going to be spotted out. And oh unfortunately no! run into the wall. The turret kill. Uh, they also were going to run into Phoenix as well, unfortunately. But this could be the start of some momentum swing here for the side of Dominguez Hills. As is generally the case, winning the pistol round puts you in a very good spot to win the second pistol round. It's not a for sure thing, but it 
it's near close because, you know, you have all the money going into the second round. The Broncos are going to be stuck on a full eco, most likely pistols. And uh, a lot of Dominguez Hills will be sporting Spectres, Stingers, a lot of those SMGs that can be much more powerful, especially at short range. So not unlikely that this will end up being 10-4 after this round is said and done. And things to note as well, uh, a lot of the pacing... Uh, kind of limiting abilities were, or at least were initially drafted for the side of the Broncos. The Jade Wall, a lot of the smokes. Uh, but it doesn't mean that the Mega Hills doesn't have their own way to control the pacing of the game as well. I actually spoke too soon. The Broncos going for a force buy. They have all stingers, which if they win will put them in a decent position. But if they lose this round, regardless of the force buy, they will be in deep trouble eco-wise because they have spent every last credit they have on buying these guns in the second round. Gonna push forward a little bit more. It doesn't really make it clear as to what their initial plan is, but it does look like Dominguez Hills is prepared for a lot. They're spreading their resources um, very well. Not being able to kind of get caught one side line. They're gonna put some clouds down here on possibly what they're gonna challenge, but not really considering these two members pushing forward as the primary target. As, of course, it could be just a distracting force, one-for-one one trade in the back line. The two-for-one trade could be huge, and this could be started something beautiful for the side of the Broncos. Their spike carrier is still safe, and close to the other side of the map, this combative force wow. was just a distraction, just as I would mentioned. And what a fantastic call from the Broncos, completely baiting and switching out to Megas Hills. One will be here for defense, but they're going to be completely well off. And that high ground voiceless, that's almost suicide for the side of the Megas Hills. No, yet, it's not. I spoke too soon. Two members challenged one ball. Boise State member, and they will quickly fall. It's now three versus three, two versus three, and the Bulls now are stampeding forward. Usually something we see something that the Broncos are able to do, but not just yet. Two versus two. Health bars are just getting completely deleted from the side of Bandito. He'll be taken out, though, and it's just one versus two. No, it's one versus one, and the Broncos are now able to get themselves to 11 points in this map. Wow, Soldier with a little bit of BM spraying the clip into the enemy's bodies at the end of the round there. That whole round just blew my mind. Getting two kills as a bait and then rotating to the other side of the map is inspired from the side of Boise State. They plan. They wall it off. It looks like a foregone conclusion. Dominguez takes control of Heaven, starts to bring it back a little bit into their favor, but Soldier playing the correct angles, getting the series of 1v1s that he needs rather than getting swung on by multiple people at the same time. Puts that round out of contention. He does go down, but it's able to be picked up at the last second, and wow. That was just incredibly well played from both teams. Boise State just coming out ahead by a little bit. Yeah, and these kind of tricky plays, these kind of advanced strategies are being pulled out from the Broncos out of necessity, not for style, not for showing off. It's because the Bulls are presenting that much of a challenge that the Broncos have to tap into their, their secret plays, if you will. Absolutely. Those trick plays Boise State can tend to be known for having to be pulled out here because Dominguez Hills is such a worthy opponent. You can see on the defensive side, if you look at where the blue circles are positioned on the minimap, they are spread out perfectly. The Broncos cannot enter any site without being seen or being shot at or taking damage. So the Broncos are forced to use some trickery and sneakery to open up some angles because otherwise they're just really in a tough position trying to push in here. Seeing a, three <coughs> a 3D attempt and Sage being one there in that three grouping means that they might consider that as a point of contention here in the near future. But as we can clearly see, one of the members of Dominguez Hills is long peaking this just as we've seen the Broncos do before. But they don't have the right angle. They're going to go for the ultimate over. They do secure it. Here comes the wall up, protecting them from heaven. But a fantastic swarm grenade going to be able to prevent a lot of that from push forward. And here comes that detainment as well. Broncos not able to do as much as they would like to at the moment. It's going to actually be one from the side of the Broncos. My apologies. Is now Dominguez Hills are going to be the first ones to react with minimal resources. They are suffering some casualties left and right, but it's only three versus four. Make it a three versus three, would ya? And they're going to continue to get advantage after advantage. The wall's now down from the Sage, and that heaven spot is actually dangerous for the Broncos. Here comes another Swarm Grenade. Going to maybe prevent any sort of defuse situation, and a great call at that, knowing that they do not have to stay on the point. They just have to wait for someone to get greedy for this defuse, and then go for that Swarm Grenade activation. Another bait here, but it's going to be a trade versus one versus one. Does not have the reds, but unfortunately for the side of the Bulls, the last one remaining is Soldier, and they uh, they don't like missing it too much, actually. No, Soldier with the beautiful decision there not to peek from the same angle as his teammate. Loops around, they're looking in the wrong angle. At best, he's going to get himself one kill, and, you know, Bandito makes it so that he only needs one kill. Or, sorry, not Bandito, Lycan. 
excuse me, Lycan makes it so that he only needs one kill in order to put that round out of contention. As the Broncos are on match point. One more round win, and it's looking more and more likely as in order for Dominguez Hills to put themselves in the similar position, they're going to need to win nine in a row without dropping a single it's doable. round. It's doable, but tough. Especially when you lose your Phoenix that early. The knives come out. Bandito dashes in. He's looking for anything. He'll get nothing. As the Bucky picks up the headshot kill onto Bandito, it's a four versus four. But Broncos have control of the area of the site that they need. They have full control of the back site area. Although your hat's going to have to jump out of the way. The swarm grenade. Now Dominguez Hills is on the retake. They're going to be coming in from heaven. CT. And they have one lurking in the short lane. Your hat's going to get a kill, but he'll be down to 41 health. He'll reload. He's going to send out that molly and try and seal off an angle to force the killjoy from the side of Dominguez Hills to rotate a little bit out of position. He's going to res coming in from the side of Boise State. It's a four versus two. One is going to peek from underneath. He'll go down. The other will go down. Lycan gets both kills. To get what he needs, your hat contributes with a kill of his own on that Vandal, and Boise State picks up the first map against Cal State Dominguez Hills. Wow. That was dominant. <laughs> It, it was dominant, but again, to allude to a point you had made previously, it did not look like the scoreline was uh, too indicative of how Dominguez Hills are playing. They are really putting the Broncos with their back against the wall, and it's un unfortunate for them that it's such a, a, a comfortable position for the Broncos to be in because a lot of teams do that. Yeah, I mean, the Broncos won most, if not a good portion of those rounds by a very small margin. You know, there was a clutch. They won by time. They won by a grenade taking somebody out at the right time. So right. not making it easy at all are Dominguez Hills. It's just Boise State coming out ahead in the clutch moments that decide victory and defeat there. Just a quick reminder for everybody, we are excited to announce that we are broadcasting our first ever fighting tournament. If you're interested in competing in Street Fighter V, Tekken 7, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, or Smash Ultimate, sign up at smash.gg slash tournament slash the beatdown Boise State. We only have one of those events are remaining left. It is the Smash Ultimate tournament going on in just a couple days. But when that happens, we are more than excited to see which of our favorite heroes get played and who goes to the top. Ganondorf. Ganondorf. <laughs> hey, it's all about that Ganon. If he gets what he can, if he gets those punches in at the early game, you know he can kill somebody at thirty percent. That's all he needs. There's there's a, a bunch of highbrow mechanics when it comes to Ganon, and it's simply just turning the other way when you're starting that warlock. Punch. You're saying he's a thinking man's character. He's he's similar in the sense that you're playing chess with unlimited time, and, <laughs> and that's just because he's incredibly slow. Well, very incredible round for the Broncos there. They're up by one map. We're going to take a short break and come back to you with map number two in this best of three series between the Broncos and Dominguez Hills. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Legendary parts for legendary wins. NationalGuard.com to begin your guard adventure.
Here are a couple lessons I've learned over the years. Friendships come in all shapes and sizes. And always buckle up. Seatbelts save lives. That's a rule we can all live by. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Boise State Game Pants Esports Arena for our coverage of the NECC Collegiate Valorant regular season. Each match taking us closer and closer to those playoffs. Maybe a championship? I am Tim Maybe. Voiceless Whitman, and joining me on the desk tonight is Jared Baratel Castiglione. Hi, oh. There he is, the man himself. I'm a man. <laughs> Look at that beard. It is a beard. I grew it myself. Thank you. It's beautiful. So we've just seen map one in Boise State versus Dominguez Hills. It was split. Mm -hmm. It was dominant in score, but may not, maybe not so much so in play itself. Yeah, and again, just a, a similar rhyme when it comes to playing against the Broncos is you got to be the one winning out in that gunplay. And most of the time, it was ended up with the Broncos. And despite having the right idea map-wise, movement-wise, and rotation-wise, the gunplay is going to be the one that seals the deal. Gunplay is so important in this game. Crosshair placement, reaction times, those are the sort of things that keep you alive in those clutch moments. And Boise State just having that little bit more clutch potential that carried them to most of their round wins in that last game. Just a reminder of our rules tonight. This is the Valorant NECC League. We've got nine week series, 30 plus teams competing against each other in best of three sets. The maps are decided in advance each week. But the home team gets to pick their opening side, attackers or defenders, for the first and third games in the series, if we have a third game. The away team picks their opening side for the second game. And the Broncos are in our highest bracket, the champions bracket. We also have challengers and emergence. But don't be sleeping on those lower, cha lower tiered uh, brackets there because they can, they can be dangerous. They might impress you and get some upsets. Yeah, and the cool thing to note is there are some times, similar to that of the Boise State rosters, there's two of us, right? Other schools also have the opportunity of having more than one roster, and that means that that first roster that may not be able to, to do the things right, they can be a point of note, you know, study and adaptation from the other teams and other brackets. So, again, uh, similar to the way that the game of Valorant's played, information can be huge in the grand scheme of the tournament as well. Absolutely. Speaking of information, this is the information details on our team. Competing tonight, we have Bandito, played by Ethan Cobb. Dreammaker is Luke Edwards. Soldier is Jack Wilcox. Lycan is Blake Ramsey. And your hat is Seth Banta. And the crowd goes wild. We have potentially one map remaining between them and their final victory of the night in the matchup between Boise State and the Cal State Dominguez Hills Bulls. If the, if the Cal State Dominguez Hills Bulls are able to eke out a win in this one, we will go to a map three. If Boise State are victorious once again, that's all, folks. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens. We could be in for uh, another quick one, just like that one, or we could, this could be a knockdown, drag out, slugfest, 12 rounds each, and then we hit <laughs> overtime. So. And, and it's possible, because Dominguez has show that they have horns, but if they sharpen them between maps, we'll have to see here. Again, they, they have a lot of potential. There is some slight question as to the, the draft. I mean, when it comes down to it, you pick split as a map, but don't get a jade on your team. That's or Sage, sorry, uh, then what, what are you doing without those jade walls? Yeah, it's a big it's, question mark. It'll be interesting. Maybe Split just isn't their map. Ooh. They may be. They may have better luck on Haven, a little bit of a golden child in the Valorant community. Everybody loves Haven. This map's incredibly fun. So we are launching into the game. We have Boise State playing with a Breach, swapping out that Brimstone for an... Oh, oh excuse uh. me. My apologies. They have swipped sides. Dominguez Hills playing with a Breach. The Omen that they favored in the last game. A Raze, a Killjoy, and a Sova. So only one uh, Duelist on the side of Dominguez Hills. They're just playing the Raze in that Duelist category right now. This is such a similar draft to one we've seen so much in the past from Boise State. But now they've almost had a staple with this Killjoy. I don't think they've played a map without her yet. No, but they are going for that double Duelist, especially the Reyna that they do uh, tend yeah. to favor. The Reyna, they love playing Reyna on Haven here. So with the use of that Brimstone and the Killjoy, they'll have information and control of sites. And then the duelists can do what they do and pick up frags. How long, uh, place your bets, how many rounds does it, does it happen before Dreammaker gets a Odin or Ares? And starts spraying through the garage door. Exactly. <laughs> um, I give it, I give it 
four rounds. Four within, rounds? Within he four, rounds, four rounds in, he has it? Within four rounds, he picks, oh, up okay. a, he picks up an Ares and starts trying to spray through the garage door. Goes for the double smoke here on Long C. Great call, because they're able to get through the ultimate orb so early on without eliminations. And now they're full retreating as a group back to being garage. Gonna get some eliminations here on the backside. Broncos will actually fall too deep and give a two-man advantage over to Dominguez Hills. Uh, this could be ultimately one of the maps that uh, is suited to be claimed defender heavy, although getting stretched between three different points of contention is, is a difficult order to fill. Absolutely, and Dominguez Hills coming out very aggressive in our very first map in the very first, uh, um, very first round of this map here. They pushed straight up through mid and got themselves two quick kills and then fall away, allow the, the territory that they've gained to be re reclaimed by Boise State and, uh, you know, dare Boise State to push into them on site. And so far, it's working out great for them. The Sova on the side of Dominguez Hills is going to pick up his third kill of the game as the spike will go down, but there's only two Broncos to defend it, and there are five Bulls approaching. Uh, it's almost a stampede of such. Going to be a nice set of uh, defenders here for the recap. Not able to get it just yet. A lot of bullets being exchanged, and actually Broncos to pick up one, two eliminations, making it a two versus three, making it a little bit more manual. How about making it a two versus two, a Whoa! one versus two, and it's just one member. It's going to just be Bandito versus the world, and he's actually going to secure it. The Globetrotter almost with the personal ace in the defense, unable to be recaptured. The Broncos setting up that first round win. And yeah, they did a lot of damage with their guns, but you gotta question how much mental damage they just did to Dominguez. Holy cow, in a two versus five, Boise State managed to clutch it that's out. A, that's a tilter. Oh, that's so tilting. But I mean, if you're gonna take people, two people on this Bronco squad to clutch a 2v5 for you, it would probably be Bandito in your hat. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, that's why they're on the characters that they are, right? I mean, putting putting Bandito on, on Reyna is almost such a, uh, oh, that makes sense. You know, it's, it's such an easy go because of how high they are on that frag list. They're topping the school board periodically, if not every time. There, oh, what, no, it's one round in. What did I tell you? Within four rounds, you got it the second round. That's just, just the way that they like to play the game, though, and that's something that uh, we can see uh, oftentimes from the Bronco squad. It has yet to kind of bite them in the butt because it's pretty hard for teams to realize what to do to deal with it. Nice blind coming out here from the side. Gonna peek around the corner, but it's a little bit too late now. And Dominguez Hill still is down to four members. Now it's just three versus uh, one because he's only surrounded by three members of the Broncos. He's for the spike plant. Here comes that storm grenade as well. So that's a huge tool for the side of the Broncos and a nice 2-0 so far on this map. And you know, it goes to show that if this isn't you know a lot of what they like on terms of split, if they don't like, of course, ascent, uh, this is again one of their more favorited maps. Yeah, I mean, Boise State, they pick up the win in the pistol round. That generally tends to translate into a win in the follow-up round. That's not unheard of. But Dominguez Hills now have the full buy that they've been looking for. They're stacked up with Vandals and Phantom or two, I think. Or maybe oh, there's a Judge, actually. Anyway. Yes, get the Judge. Love the Judge. But they've got the guns that they want in their hands now. So, And Boise State are still carrying the guns that they bought from their sort of half by in the last round. So if there's a chance for Dominguez Hills to take back control of this early game, it's now. Nice going through the typical I don't care about walls or doors or anything. As long as you're behind it, you're taking damage strat. And now they're considering maybe challenging A. This is something that... Uh, we don't typically see from the Broncos. It just looks like they're going in reverse chronological order for the point C, B, and now finally A. And mixing it up is exactly the name of the game when it comes to these kind of lengthy and uh, mentally try tiresome uh, games. You got to keep your opponents on the toes mentally as well as physically, but uh, looks like the Broncos got the physicality on lockdown. Yeah, Booty Bandito on that Reyna will get the kill he needs. He survives with seven health, but as is the way with Reyna, she gets all that health right back on top that of her kill. Doing some work here, but not enough just yet, as it's now just a three versus four for the Broncos. Ultimate's online for two members, making it a three versus three, but the Empress is online in addition to does look like some member. Oh, fantastic call out. He's going to get the backside of both members here from uh, the Bulls, and one in heaven will be spotted. They know exactly where they are. The fire is going to come out. Napalm and everything's thrown up there. Go ahead and get the kitchen sink detached and throw it up there, too, as Broncos are now three up in this round. Dreammaker with the excellent idea to save his shock darts and throw them up there when he knows the final player for Dominguez Hills is pinned back in the corner of heaven. So no way that they can escape without getting shot and no way they can get out of the way of those shock darts without going down. So. Hey. Hey, what? Correct me if I'm wrong. Those are two flips for this Reyna. 
Because this is on the live patch. Yes, it is. Our game previous, yes, you are correct. The game previous uh, was on the previous patch, but this is the live patch. So, Frenzy's more expensive. The uh, Marshall's better. Marshall's better. The arguably, <laughs> yeah. The, the Stinger is a little bit worse and more expensive. And Reyna has a it's bit different. of a change. <laughs> Reyna has a change. We'll call it. She has more us usability for her Q and E moves, but less of them. She's just more of a team-oriented player now, as opposed to a solar superstar. Yeah. So Dreammaker gonna come out here with his drone, gonna see what he can see. He'll catch maybe the tail of somebody in B, but they won't get much else. The soldier will just pick up a kill with his bulldog, and they'll decide B is not the point for them. They're gonna rotate a little bit towards C. Soldier will send a few through the smoke. But the Broncos, showing some restraint have not actually declared a site that they want to hit just yet. Just picking information, seeing what they can see, starting to cheat a little bit towards C, and that's not a bad idea as there is nobody on C proper at the moment. There are, there are a couple players playing Garage, and Dreammaker will do what he does and try and send some Odin shots in there and get what he can. Or somewhere you want to stay when there's just a cascade of bullets coming towards you. The blind will come out here from, of course, Bandito not able to get left. much of anything other than that. You're backing them up. The dynamic duo, in addition now to, looks like Dream Ripper on the back side, <laughs> gonna take out the garage, gets the shock dart for the vision and just says, oh, I can just click you and you die. It didn't matter if there was a wall there or not. He knew roughly where the where the player from Dominguez Hills was, so he just clicks until there isn't a player there anymore. That's uh, how Odin works in general. The <laughs> all-father, they call them. Uh-huh. Boise State with a quick score lead. We were questioning, you know, after, especially after that early aggression from Dominguez Hills in round one, put Boise State on the back foot. It was looking for a little bit like they might have a way back into this, but wow, they're already in trouble as Boise State with a quick 4-0, and things not looking too great for Dominguez Hills in the early game. The, the uh, next intermission between rounds, remind me to bring up something very interesting as a question. I will, I will. Nice challenge here from C Long, gonna be pushing through. No one's here to defend quite yet. The shock dart will give some information, but there's no one here to defend it. Here comes the run it back just for information. Can't find anyone. Smoke's everywhere. There's literally no one on the sea defend, and it's now up to the bulls to come back to corral in this area. Here comes the hunter's fury. Going to pick up one while they're planting. They're going to go for the replant. Here comes the killjoy ultimate as well. Going to do as much as they can to detain in the dome. And here comes that Odin on the backside. Not typically something you'd use as a defending gun, but uh, Dreammaker makes it happen. Uh, from time to time, one member from Boise State will be down here, unfortunately. But it's not something that the Boise State the roster is uncovered with. Goes for the two-piece in the corner. Why is that gun so accurate? I'll never know. Gonna go for an extended trade. Gonna go for the overhealing, but it's not quick enough. And meanwhile, the spike has been ticking this entire time. The Broncos holding this entire team at arm's length. And unfortunately, no one's able to get to there. Is everyone able to get away in time? Oh Whoa. my goodness, barely. But just told you gets a bit of a haircut there. All right, here's the, here's the question. All these guns have skins, and they're really cool. If instead, or in addition, Riot makes a masterwork skin for each gun, specifically Odin, which would shoot out little ravens, the Spectre would shoot out little ghostly particles, the Sheriff would make like the old timely like gun ricochet from the, the Wild oh, West movies. I love it. Isn't that cool? Would who that can, ever work? Who can we get a hold of at Riot? Doc, do you know anybody at Riot? We'll have to ask we him. Got, after we the got match. the hookup from Dr. Haskell. Yeah. <laughs> we got a multi million, multi million dollar idea. Here comes a multi million dollar idea as well, continuing to pad their pockets with change. Uh, giving almost uh, freely over by the Mega Hills, but they will need to have a little bit more security on their bank account. As of right now, not really being able to do much as there's only uh, four members now, three members to defend their balance, and the Broncos are looking at about cashing in another round in their favor. I don't even know how Bandito knew to spray that shot. Instant headshot like he could see there, but he shouldn't have been able to. There was a smoke in the way. Just the game sense, I guess. Enough. Here comes the flashbang out, gonna push forward. No, it's a fake push. They're gonna bait a lot of the ammo out of the side of Dominguez Hills. Unfortunately, they do finally get the final shots, but the entire time they've got Soldier in the wings. Don't know if he's gonna be spotted. Here comes the turret to just turn a little bit left and they'll be fine. But it's not gonna turn on the dial fast enough, but it doesn't matter, forcing, unfortunately, Soldier into a position of action. Three members versus one though, and he's up in the heaven. Gonna be scouted out, not gonna get one on return. He's gonna be taken out. And uh, the Parkers don't even have to worry about the explosion. No, they have uh, plenty of time to escape before it goes off. Won't even go off. Unfortunate, though. 
almost made that a little bit of a contention there for Dominguez Hills on the attempted retake, but just not quite enough as the Boise State's post plant positions were just too widespread. They had every angle covered by at least one agent, potentially two. Uh, and, you know, Dominguez Hills not making the call to try any sort of a flank to come around from, you know, attacker spawn. So it's just too easy for Boise State to predict where they're coming from. And they had too much utility to keep them at bay. For the operator, when you get the kill, it would go like king because you cashed in on a kill, you know? Oh, yeah. And there it is. The doors are gone again. The doors are gone. So you're not safe anymore, at least in that area. Soldier looking for the solo push. No, your hand always exactly where they need to be to back up the teammates. It's always such a nice, reassuring thing to have a player of that caliber backing up your play. Like in holding this midpoint, kind of being still the lurker. Going for the long shots with that highly accurate gun. Ultimate ore being secured by the Broncos. Trying to get that Phoenix ult back up and running. Ooh. Gonna be taken out. Lycan gonna give information to say there's still someone on B. Gonna trade their life for it. It's up to Boise State to make that worth it right now. They're gonna continue to push B over here. Gonna get one elimination. Making it a nice even two versus... No, it's actually four versus three. Three members remain here from the side of the Bulls. And they are kind of running away with some steam. It's going to see if it's going to get stopped in their tracks or not just yet. As they are going to need to push this shortly. The timer has started. And you can hear that from the ever-increasing speed of that beeping. The faster it gets, the closer it is to blowing up. And it's only a matter of time before the timer has rung its final bell. Four versus three now again. Pushing through Garage. You're going to get punished by that massive Odin. Going to push forward, and it looks like it's not something that they want to continue to contest. They are able to pick up an operator. They're going to walk away with it. I think that's the right call. Walking back towards the enemy spawn could be the ultimate choice. And yes, the Broncos are hunting, but I don't know if they have a good grasp on where this player is. Very unfortunate there for the side of Dominguez Hills. They throw out a ultimate from the Killjoy, that lockdown, trying to get somebody, and it just gets taken out immediately. And an exit kill actually taking off the... Well, it's going to be an expensive Odin, uh, un uh, sorry, inexpensive Odin, but that was uh, right before, you know, a lot of things could have happened. Unfortunately for the Broncos, they were not uh, privy to that rotation. Uh, but another round going over in their favor, I think they'll take that trade. The Broncos are also swimming in uh, some How such can they even move? ludicrous levels are, of money. They, their they'll pockets be are just so full, they mm -hmm. should not be able to move at all. I mean, he just had to buy a brand, Dreammaker just bought himself a brand new Odin and still has 4,300 credits. That one was kind of dirty anyway. You know, had a lot of blood on it and stuff. Gotta get clean a new one. It. Just buy a new one. When you're that rich, why not? It's just like uh, Reaper in Overwatch. He just throws away his guns <laughs> as does. opposed to reloading. Well, a trade going out to either side here as a shock dart from Dreammaker will get the early kill. Bandito not looking in the right direction will get very tagged up, but Lycan will finish off Gonbare. And Broncos have control of the B site. The spike's gonna go down. Couple boy players for Boise State are very tagged up, but Soldier playing the Lurk will get another kill. And it's down to just two members remaining from Dominguez Hills as they try to enter in through the side door. Boombot goes in first. A couple shock darts, not going to find anybody. Bandito watching that angle. Oh, the op shot misses and Bandito escapes with his life. Until the grenade comes in. Now two players from Boise State are remaining. The showstopper comes wow. in, but finds nobody from Boise State. They're going to send in the running back from Soldier. He'll get one. He'll throw the hot hand to get on top of the spike so the defuse is not allowed. And it's a 1v1. Hurt's still up there as well. They gotta be careful. Wallbang's a possibility. Taking about 18 damage away from their health bar. They can't go for the defuse. It's, it's a little bit too late. The beeping's too fast, and they're gonna walk away with it. An eighth round win in a row. Uncontested from the side of the Mingus Hills Bulls. Boise State picks up the Odin at the end. Gotta get that cash value as Here well. Here you go, buddy. <laughs> yeah, it gives it back. Can't lose two Odin uh, Odins. But I like the decision by there from Soldier to play time. He can be aggro, we know that. He, we know he loves to flank, we know he loves his gunplay. But showing the restraint to not take that final gunfight and instead let the timer beep down means that there is no chance that Boise State loses that round. If he takes that fight, there is a chance, however small, that he loses and Dominguez Hills has enough time to, you know, to defuse. So, yeah. smart play, it takes, the, it takes the least amount of risk Play smart and, you know, just well played from them. And Lycan gets an instant headshot, but Sean will jump in with the judge and get a trade back of one of his own. Dominguez Hills returning to that very aggressive mid-push that they tried in the very first round, and it is returning slight results here as they're still even at the moment. The drone comes spotted. in. At least one member will be spotted out, knowing they're going to be able to push things a little bit more with the information. Not really putting themselves in a plan of action for where they want to plant the bomb just yet, but... I'll make sure they have the man advantage to do so comfortably, and they do so. It's now a two versus two. 
Uh, but huge kudos to Dominguez Hills to force the Broncos to not even put a plan of action into motion before evening up that score man-wise. And we can talk about the strategy of each individual round and how well each team is playing, but something I just want to bring to the table we have yet to mention is what must the mental toll be for Dominguez Hills to be down eight rounds? Yeah, and I mean, this is a constant flow of being at a huge disadvantage, right? So the waves of that kind of detainment that they put on themselves are almost ever increasing that of a tidal wave. It's just something you have to weather and continue to reset. Each wave will affect left. you differently. The more resolute you are, the better you end up being. And just like Last that, they've now put standing. it again at a one versus one. Having the op here in the situation where a long peak could be huge. Here comes the Hunter's Fury again. Going to be caught up in the reticle of it, but not just yet. Here comes the Orbital Strike while he's standing. Still could be huge. He's going to have to get himself out of dodge. He's going to push them left. right into where he wants to. Corralling him to a shorter range engage could be huge here for the side of the Broncos. And uh, it doesn't even look like your hat was tagged. His armor's now gone, sure, but full health bar. He just has to be careful. No sound can be given, and he's actually going to get the full rotation on the backside. The off will be shot. He knows he's nearby. He's going to be caught with his pants down to get shot from behind. <laughs> you speak about demoralizing. They had the 1v1. They had the op. They had all these things aligned then. But unfortunately, your hat has their own constellation, and they put it into action. Your hat with the galaxy brain play there in two separate respects. First of all, going for the orbital strike when he knows that the enemy Sova cannot move very much because mm -hmm. you don't have a lot of mobility during that hunter's strike. I love that play. I would have been over the moon if he'd gotten the kill, but it's still a smart play. And then second, instead of letting himself be pushed into, especially with an op, such a deadly weapon, he goes on the offensive, he takes a flank, and it works out for him. Being the hero in that round is your hat, and that he deserves all the praise in the world for playing like a galaxy brain. But, legit soldier, early on in the round, whoa, oh. gonna have his life saved. That was very close. Your hat gonna save legit soldier, and then Lycan gonna spray through the smoke to pick up another kill, so it's a 4v3. The only one to go down for Boise State has been their Sova player. Until they answer that one back, it's a 3v2. Soldier is tagged up, but he can heal himself. He's got the hot hands and he's got the firewall, and Phoenix can do that. So he's going to be back up to full health in no time. It's going to be a 3v2 as the Broncos cheat towards C. They're going to push up long and potentially seal off the exits with these swarm grenades and then dare Dominguez Hills to push into them. Nice rotation here from the side. From the Dominguez Hills making it a 1v2. We've seen your hat in a situation similar to this. Are they able to repeat the success? They are able to get it to a 1v1, but unable to get the final success there on that kill. And uh, a nice round win, and this could be uh, exactly what they need in terms of a reset button on the side of the Dominguez Hills. Yeah, they get a little bit of confidence. They were able to get themselves a win. They were able to walk away with a gun. It was very helpful for them. That was a thrifty. They hadn't spent much money on that one, so they didn't expect to win that. Honestly, the the win for that round goes to one mad bad dog, the, the Silva player for the side of Dominguez Hills. Without that flank and the two kills he picks up in long there, it is a much scarier position for Dominguez Hills, but once he does that it's a 1v2 and although your hat gets one he just doesn't have the health and time to get a second so although he died at the very end of the round the, so the omen player on the side of dominguez hills is i think completely to blame for the uh the success that they were able to pick up in that round there he's detained by that swarm grenade but the nice run it back will give them the opportunity to say hey uh everything on killjoy's kits over here on this side maybe we can go somewhere else and that's exactly what the broncos tend to do is use that information to their best advantage not going to go for the ultimate orb just yet. They don't have any insight as to where the bulls are on this side of the map, but that will shortly be remedied, I am sure. Uh, Dreammaker, a fantastic ab uh, ability to get things locked down. Here comes that showstopper, and that show is actually stopped for the Broncos. They're going to continue to push A-long. Maybe not the best choice. Here comes the grenade, but there's still someone there in the back corner going to be taken out, and it's now going to be a 4v4. The rest of the Broncos are continuing to contest this heaven. They're going to go for the spot. Spike plant, we're in a very open and very defendable location. A lot of health being given over for that plant, though. And 36 health, and he actually gets the trade. Going to go for a two versus one. The Broncos will just be legit soldier versus the world. No ultimate 7 Ooh. HP to their name. It's a pretty tall order. Here comes the defuse. It's completely scoutable. They get to the 50% mark. Not going to go for the shots here on target. Going to miss it as well. And another round win over to Dominguez Hills. Yeah, they were able to get that one thanks to that great usage of Last the smoke by Omen the and just the bad luck of 
uh, legit soldier attempting to spray through the smoke in an area that was slightly different from where the diffuse was actually happening. So great retake. Although the uh, Rolling Thunder was largely missed by most Boise State players, they're still able to capitalize on that retake and pick up their second round win. So Eco looking a little better for Dominguez Hills and a little bit worse for Boise State. This may be the beginnings of a comeback. This is the final round of the half. So Eco's going to be completely reset after this as we switch sides anyway. But very interesting to see what Dominguez Hills can do once they become the attackers. Got some nice re-healing here, over-healing. Still going to be shot off from that turret. Going to be able to get the elimination, though. Heals and firewall will deploy to see long and this could be their main point of contention. We do not see. No, it is Killjoy that has the spike here on the side of the Broncos, and this is exactly is where they spawn. Here comes the Empress. We're going to be invisible for a little bit. Going to push forward. Here comes the Hunter's Fury as well. And members left and right are dropping up both teams. Dominguez Hills barely losing out here. Three versus two for Boise State. Gives them the slight advantage. But again, this is very uncharacteristic One of these first previous remains. nine wins for them. They usually are completely in control. Now they continue to assert dominance, but not without struggles of their own. That was a little bit of a clown fiesta. I couldn't even keep Switching up with how sides. many people were dying because everyone went down so fast. But oh, Boise State thrives on chaos, you're as being, we've you're said being before. Humble. You know exactly what abilities and guns were used and how many shots were in each clip, and you're aware of it all. That's why you're on the desk. <laughs> we're, we're, in, we're, we're perfect. We never make mistakes. We never say the wrong thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke, people. Twitch chat, do not roast me, please. Actually, Boise no. State. Roast me. Give me your worst that's still uh, Twitch appropriate. I want to see that. His beard's too long. Well, you got me there. That was, uh, although it was very chaotic, as we've said before, Boise State thrives on chaos. So they walk away with a 10-2 half. And they are now on the defense, forcing Dominguez Hills to push into them. Maybe Dominguez Hills' playstyle will favor them just a little bit more. And they'll be able to come out with a few more round wins on the attacking side. Uh, it's a ticking time bomb that turns around, but it's also a ticking time bomb watching this player right here. Dreammaker only needs a small stack of cash before they cash it in for that Odin, that godly gun, especially with how they use it. They will falter here, getting one elimination, give them some change in their pocket. The information given over is more important. The grenade will be given over a lot of damage. 72 plus will be there on the health, so the spike is planted, and it does look like the Bulls actually had the man advantage until that final elimination crossed the board. They're going to hold a lot of these angles, going to be find out by your hat. He's going to look for another opportunity to pick off a player, not looking his angle. Get some Last shots on target, standing. but misses, and two players of Boise State almost go down sim simultaneously. A third one will fall, and Dominguez Hills now will pick up a third uncontested round win. Boise State playing well there, just the retake not favoring them, not getting the angles they need, and the post-plant positions from Dominguez Hills being way too covered to be able to make a real contest for Boise State. And as we often, so often say, uh, you know, the, the win winner of the pistol round has a huge advantage going into the second round. Boise State did opt to, full, uh, to you know, force buy on that split map after they lost one of the pistol rounds there. But here, they're showing a little bit more restraint. Legit, Legit Soldier and Booty Bandito only holding classics and a little bit of utility. So I did see uh, Ares in the hands of Dreammaker, but I mean, how can you not? It's uh, Dreammaker. That's, that's honestly not surprising. And the least bit, Scouting Jark will be given out. This drone will follow as well. A lot of information being get over to the side of the Bulls, and they're going to use it really incredibly well, taking two members of Boise State almost instantaneously out of the picture. Spike, Spike planted. instantly planted as well. They're playing with a lot more ferocity than they were the past nine rounds, so they are finally starting to pick up steam, and there is definitely a sign of life in this team. Good to see if they don't have any chance of walking away with this one. Is they're going to take out, wow, another grenade kill. That's two for Sean in the same round, as it's just Dreammaker with his Ares remaining in a one versus five. Now, he does have a gun to do it with, as this Ares can be deadly, but the man advantage does not suit him. He may be able to get out of here with his life, but I don't see him getting a round win as well. It's one or the other. <laughs> I, think it, I think it will be one or the other. He is going to opt to walk away, as will most of the players of Dominguez Hills. They feel Wait. That, wait. No. 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 What? You can't do that. He doesn't want to keep it. Huh. Interestingly, Dreammaker chooses to sacrifice himself and drop the Ares. Wanted I mean, a, wanted a new one. There is a difference. You do get more money for a round that you die versus a round that you live, but the difference should have been less than the cost of the Ares. So. Yeah. And Interesting choice there. Not, I, I, I mean, there was definitely still enough time for them to get there. 
unless maybe they were confident in the fact that somehow the bulls have made it to their spawn. But other than that, I mean, that would be the only point of contention. And even so, with an Ares on on board, you still should be able to peek out a 1v1 even in your own spawn. That wasn't very interesting. Especially, look, he bought another Ares. I don't know. I don't understand. I'm not this Giga Brand, okay? Maybe it's something I just don't know yet. Rudy Bandito, Bandito going to pick up the early kills. Going to put it in a 4 versus 5 before he gets taken down by Gonbare. But there is a full C send on the side of Dominguez Hills, and the Broncos are going to be forced to retake because they do not have the manpower on site in order to keep the spike from going down at the moment. I guess we plan it when the timer starts. This is always an uncomfortable feeling for whatever team you're on. This puts the stress on 11. And it does look like after the spike has been planted, uh, it seems as if the Migas Hills are looking for a long C hold for the spike itself. We've seen resources left and right. Try and get a nice way for them to go around this corner safely. Here comes the smoke to block out a lot of that. Molly as well will be used, and they just have to get themselves in position to hold this long C as well as contesting this. Here comes that shock in the Hunter Fury. The remaining two shots of it will be used here in perfect tandem. What a fantastic bait there from the side of the Bulls, completely catching Boise State off guard. That was incredible. Fully trusting and utilizing their utility in order to let Boise State get right up on the spike. Yeah, you can stand there. We'll just kill you with every single ability we have as soon as you start defusing. Holding the last two Hunter's Fury charges was also paramount for success there. Yeah, if you throw all those away immediately, attempting to you know continually hit the spike, trying to keep the defuse from happening, there is still potentially time for them to get somewhere else. But in holding them, you make sure that the spike is constantly under threat until it's too late to defuse. So just Dominguez Hills absolutely earning the win there, doing their smart utility usage. Looks like Blanca, they're trying to get some more on the aggressive side, playing passively. Not really their style and also not working out for them. The rotations on the backside from Bandita will be met in kind with the array of bullets and uh, completely getting themselves eliminated, Spike giving the planted. advantage over man-wise to the Mingus Hills. Four members versus five. The Broncos are going to even it up. It's going to be four versus four now as they continue to score on this point. They're going to continue to get some nice shots here on angle, going up for some wall bangs as well. Putting two members heaven might be not a good idea, but they are going to consider it. There are so many members of the Bulls everywhere, and even through the smoke and the sky, the smokes as well, not going to be able to obscure much of the vision from the Bulls, and they have an eye out for the Bronco players, a sixth round win without any contention. Yeah, that's four round wins in a row for Dominguez Hills. The Broncos are in a really tough spot. Their defensive side does not seem to have the rotative or, you know, strategic capability in order to outplay what Dominguez Hills are bringing to the table right here. They just seem to have an answer for everything that Boise State try. I mean, that that push up through, you know, they flagged out somebody with the drone. They pushed in. They might have had a chance to win that gunfight, but they hold the paranoia in reserve due to Dominguez Hills and send it out at the perfect time, and then it's just cleanup kills. See long going to be the point where a lot of the members for the Bulls are going to consider. Going to push forward. Here comes out a boom box as well, blasting forward. Hard to predict that level of motion. The blind in tandem with the Bullets as well is going to send two members from Boise State to a early reset. They're going to have to watch the rest of their teammates struggle to find an inch to get themselves into this. No members for the Bulls have yet to falter. A lot of damage being given over, but no kills secured. And the Broncos are struggling again to find an edge. They're going to try and challenge each point to get one picked up. This could be the start of something beautiful for them. There's a second one picked up, tying things three to three. Here comes a lot of the fire here, hot hands. Here comes the running back. He's gonna go for maybe some information. Gonna actually take out one with some help. He'll push forward as well. He's gonna go for the defuse, but he's gonna be rewound before it ends up happening, I believe. Does one do so, two remaining. members remaining. Only one member remaining here for the side of the Megas Hills, and this could be huge for them. They might actually lose this round after going so heavily favored. And look at this, actually soldiers taking bullets for the defuse to go through successfully. If that's not hey, take advantage of teams being the team members being eliminated, then I don't know what is. I mean, beautiful decision and very smart there from Dreammaker to jump on the far left side of the spike. He knows that the shots that are most likely to come in are from the easy peekable angle mm -hmm. on the side of Dominguez Hill. So if he starts to defuse on the right side, there's a great chance he goes down there and the ground goes to Dominguez Hills. Just well played, thinking through the levels of what it's what plans to bring, what Dominguez Hills plans to bring to the table in order to give themselves the best chance to win that round and 
just outplayed with a little bit of strategy, and a beautiful, beautiful Recon Dart goes out at the beginning and catches two. So they know that it is a heavy B commitment ahead of time for the side of Boise State. This could allow them to get into position before, uh, you know, the attack really comes through for Dominguez Hills and get them off kilter so that this attack is not as potent as the previous game. You would mention how important information is. Boise State now having information on two. They quickly take them out, even it up. It's a 5v3 now, and the Broncos now seem to have a better understanding of how these bulls like to play the game. They're going to take things both aggressively and conservatively. Aggressive for the gathering of that information, conservative on what they do with it. And it even looks like Lycan has picked up a shotgun for that short range domination. Molly's going to come out, block the garage doors here for now. And it's just a waiting game. Again, with the Broncos being on defense, they do not have to do anything but prevent the Bulls from being able to play the game. And it looks like they're going to do some shots here from that shotgun. They're not going to be able to land, unfortunately. And that does give a angle for the Dominguez Hills Bulls to push through. And that looks like it's going to be A. It's just two members, one ultimate. Left. That attainment could be huge for them. But this is the obvious choice. Here comes the spiking planted. The overall strike will be huge. It's going to stop the plant as well. It's going to be spouted out, but it's going to be enough for them to get an angle here on some shots. It's one versus four. We've he's only got 24 things. health. He's got 24 health. He's under heaven. They have to know that he's nearby, and they do so. He actually gets spotted from top, and that's a thrifty. You had mentioned how in... Uh, when it comes to monetary value on each of these rounds being spent, how important it is to conserve for future advantages. Well, Broncos just went a thrifty, and they are on match point. Now they can go full buy. They have all the money they need, and they have all the rounds they need. Dominguez Hills were making a show of it for four rounds straight, but now they're going to need to win six in a row if they want to bring this back to a winnable position for themselves. Tough but doable. We've seen crazier things in competitive Valorant. Hashtag winnable. Very winnable. Now they are going to play the Urhat Brimstone on the C point. He'll smoke it off immediately, which may make Dominguez Hills a little bit less likely to pursue a full send straight into C. They are going to back off. They want to look at a little bit in Garage. Boise State will smoke that off as well. They're going to get the information that all the, care, uh, all the players for Dominguez Hills are lurking in mid. So now Boise State know roughly where the attack is coming from, and they have the information. Wow. Beautiful play. They have the information, as we always talk about, in order to react well to what Dominguez Hills is doing before it happens. What do they have in advantage now? They now have a health lead, but in addition to that, they have an ultimate lead. And this Omen ultimate could be huge for them, depending on how they use it. We always question the scarcity of Omen ults being used. Uh, and I don't know what the Last nature of that is, but it doesn't look like they need it. Just one member remaining for the Bronco squad. It's going to be a 1v3. He is blinded and he'll be found out. And it's Lycan versus three. Here comes a lot of that disorientation, but it's not enough. And it does look like the Bulls are not going down without a fight, even if they were at match point. The Boise State Broncos are going to have to fight for this one. Yeah, Boise State absolutely playing well in the early round. It was the mid round where things started to fall apart for them. They knew that most of the push was coming in through Garage, uh, but it just felt like the rotations were a little bit off kilter. You know, Dreammaker gets himself taken down in Garage after he gets a kill. You know, he trades that out. That's not a bad play. But as soon as that happens, it seems like Boise State doesn't really know where the rest of the attack is coming from. And about three p players fall in quick succession. And that's just never going to work well for the end, blame, end game of a round there. We'll have to see what's being the plan of action here for the Bulls forward. Looks like an A site hit. They're going to send the Rolling Thunder in. And it's going to be a huge amount of disorientation. Blind, in addition to that, stacking just so much out. Bandito not be able to play for a couple seconds. Here comes that grenade that's taken out so much life from the side of the Broncos and an instantaneous plant as well. The Broncos are now being forced to set themselves up in motion. Going to go for some nice angles here, but they have already succumbed to one loss up in heaven. They are going to trade one for one, though. And both of the Killjoys ultimates will be almost stacked upon each other. Fake Defuse will bait someone out from around the corner, but you can't win that gunfight so easily. Two versus three. They do both have ultimates. It's possible that the Queen will come out here to play, and it's going to be up to just Bandito, possibly with this ultimate. No, going to conserve it. Another round win going over to the Bulls. Yeah, unfortunate there for the Broncos. They throw out the lockdown, and then the Hunter's Fury comes out to negate that. So a trade of ultimates that results in the lockdown for the Boise State Broncos being completely useless. Dreammaker is on the flank. He'll take down the other lockdown by himself, but then his position's revealed, and there's just not much he can do in that 2v4 scenario right there. And now we start questioning whether or not these full buys are going to start biting Boise State in the behind because you can see here, even your hat, considering, hmm, should I actually buy something this round? 
might not be worth it, but I think when it comes to match point, you got to keep putting your best foot forward and continue relying on the things that have worked best for you. Fast rotations, aggressive gameplay, using information, gathering information, and making informed decisions. Going into these kind of plays blind is not really suiting Boise State's play style so well, and it's not suiting this round and map so well either. Gonna reside in the old tried and true. Gonna continue to eliminate anything that could be construed as a wall. And Bandito looking for a flank opportunity. Might walk into a member right here. He's gonna pull himself into the smoke. And that's exactly what you wanna do. Conservative yet aggressive play. Walking forward aggressively, but not letting anything happen until you know you get the advantage. Spike will be planted, faked at first, and go for full commit. No, they'll get interrupted. Spike has not yet touched the ground just yet. And three versus three, this could be Spike the planted. end for all things, but it does not look like, again, the Bulls want to give up just yet. Here comes the Empress. This is what they conserved it for. Are they going to be able to push themselves forward? Here comes the blind. They're going to turn to the left. They are going to find one, and they take it. They're going to continue to use this for an advantage, getting overheals. But it's now just two members for Boise State versus one Killjoy. Are they able to find it? They do, and they have enough time for the defuse. Voiceless, I can almost say this with certainty. Boise State will take this round. Oh, yeah. They have time and a half for the defuse. The Empress usage, Def not using it in the previous round, saving it for that moment when they really needed it, made the difference in that final round. And Boise State will walk away over last fall's defending champions with a 2-0 lead. And like we've said a million times, these rounds were close. This second game was much closer than the first one. You know, Dominguez Hills put up an incredible fight, but still to be taken down 2-0 is not something you want to swallow as the defending champions from the previous semester's, you know, tournament. What can you say? It's, I think competition's always good for anybody. <laughs> Wow, what a game. Reminder for everybody out there that Boise State Esports is always looking for talented players, production, and broadcast talent. Top talent, along with good grades and eligibility, can earn scholarships as well. Sign up today by visiting boisestate.edu slash esports for more information. We'd love to have you join us here on the squad. Lots of room up here on the desk. It's a big desk. <laughs> I've got all, I can... Got some bean bags. I could lay down on this thing, yeah. It's, it's pretty cool here, yeah. We like it a lot. Mm -hmm. Especially when we win. I'm very happy. <laughs> Speaking of winning, were you scared when they pulled that to an 8-12 scoreline that Dominguez Hills had a chance to pull that back? Because I was nervous, man. If it was any other team besides the Boise State Broncos, yes. But again, um, we talk about tried and true. And just the whole motif around any of the squads here that play at Boise State University is the fact that they adapt and they learn and they overcome. Um, and that, of course, is very evident in the way that they played this last map out. Yeah, it just... It was really key of the Broncos to not let themselves panic as rounds started to fall through their grasp. Mm -hmm. You know, you can easily lose control of your cool, start to feel like you need to be the one to make a hero play and put yourself in bad positions. And, you know, Broncos stay calm, especially during that final B retake. They knew what angles they needed to push from. They all pushed together. It was just, just incredibly well done, and they absolutely deserve this win. Super big props to the Broncos for beating last fall's defending champs. And I mean, that just goes to show that it takes time. It takes, you know, a lot of practice, communication, rotations, so many factors into it. And, you know, that's, uh, that's unfortunately not the last we'll see of the Broncos. They're going to continue on in this tournament. They've got a big confidence boost heading into next yeah. week after taking down <laughs> some huge opponents this week. We're going to close out tonight with our top plays presented by the Idaho Army National Guard. These are our top five plays from the previous match. The Idaho Army National Guard invites you to take your impressive critical thinking skills into real time. We are going to close out tonight. We have had an absolute pleasure casting with you tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Stay safe out there and have a good night. Good night. Wow, that was dominant. It, it was dominant, but again... Looking at a 10-2 half round for our half score for Boise State here. And then that's looking more likely as your hat gets a very early opening kill with a headshot through the smoke. Your hat's gonna spray a little bit more. But they know exactly that the push is coming all the way through to A as your hat gets three. Lycan gets one of his own, and there's only the omen for being denied from this vision. Go for some shots now that they're able to find some things. Gonna fall down. Nice side win. We'll get the pick and another one there on the backside as well. Three members remain here for the side of Dominguez. And they must start running for the hills. No, they're gonna fight things out. A fourth one going down. Do not give Boise State the fifth flawless of the night.
our own smoke, keep themselves safe. A nice side dash to avoid that grenade. Could have been disastrous for them for them to eat that damage. You're kind of going to eat some damage as well. Down to 14, gets eliminated. Fantastic and full clip commitment here in the smoke. Not able to find anything. Going to able to get one eventually. Lycan picking up the two piece on the backside, and now it's 3v2. Bronco initially looking like they were in trouble. Broncos are kind of reeling to get themselves in position to recontest this point. Here comes the ultimate. It's going to be so much, and now the place is going to start. Here come the knives with the disorientation, but it's not going to be able to find anything just yet. More knives will be restocked. That's another pickup here for the side of Bandita, but he'll actually be taken out mid-air. Another mid-air. Right, from us, a uh, stampede of such. Gonna be a nice set of uh, the defenders here for the recap. Not able to get it just yet. A lot of bullets being exchanged, and actually Brock with the pickup. One, two eliminations, making it a two versus three, making it a little bit more manageable. How about making it a two versus two, a Whoa! one versus two? And it's just one member. It's gonna just be Bandito versus the world, and he's actually gonna. <laughs>